So, are you calling this to order? Yes, call to order. Open session, public meetings are subject to being videotaped. Your image and voice may be recorded. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. Greetings. So I guess what uh, we'll do is turn it over to you so you can give, on, Ernie. give your give your highlights. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. My name is Ernest Houle. I'm the superintendent director at Aspen Valley Regional Vocational School District. Um, it's a pleasure to be in front of you once again this year. Uh, obviously, uh, our esteemed Brillo representative, Lynn Ryan, um, has been on the school committee for many years. I won't mention the number in case you want to. Um, <laughs> but uh, we have an opportunity to just share a little bit about um, uh, what's happening at ASABIT and, and how uh, ASABIT is supporting uh, students that are from uh, Berlin and uh, how ASABIT has actually been uh, working with and continues to partner with Berlin. Uh, and I'd like to say thank you to the uh, Finance Committee and of course to the Select Board and the residents uh, as they're always uh, very supportive uh, and they continue to give support to ASABIT. Uh, so currently um, ASABIT has, uh, as of October 1, 44 students that are attending ASABIT uh, from Berlin. Uh, what I can tell you is just a quick little um, 19 of those students are receiving special education services. We have six students that are involved in a cooperative placement type program um, in which I was speaking actually earlier with uh, Kristen, your town administrator, about uh, the potential that maybe Berlin could hire somebody to take care of your website. Um, so we'll see because it needs some work. But, um, so we'll get you that information. Uh, and that's basically a student that meets a criteria that's been in their career field at least a year and a half and then has uh, good attendance, punctuality, grades, no disciplinary issues, has the opportunity to go out and work uh, for a company uh, for a minimum of 30 hours, but uh, up to 40 and even over time, uh, as well as school vacation, summers, and such. Uh, 11 of the students are on a free and reduced lunch. Uh, and then the breakdown of the shops, just to kind of give you a quick overview as to where folks are kind of um, focused on their uh, career fields. There's five that are in the auto collision uh, program, seven that are in HVAC, two in the auto tech, three in uh, biotechnology, three in business technology, one in computer programming and web, one that's in cosmetology, three in design and visual communications, two in electrical wiring, four in carpentry, two in health tech, five in metal fabrication, two in painting and design, uh, two in plumbing, and two in advanced manufacturing. Um, so um, just a little breakdown of how your students are have allocated into their program areas. Um, the 44 students you'll see uh, reflected as we walk through this um, uh, budget that I have for you, proposed budget, um, is seven st additional students than what you have um, uh, from the last October 1 number, which was 37. Uh, so if you kind of move to page one, there's a list of topics. Uh, the one that's actually in front of you is the update. You know, I noticed that we had some slides that didn't get pulled out, but uh, we'll walk you through some of these uh, topics that we have on our proposed budget. Uh, and of course, um, the entire state's waiting on factual numbers to come out, right, with the governor's budget. Um, hopefully March 3rd, but um, oh, really? nice. we'll, we'll kind of go from there. Um, that's the, that was the promise. They, I think they actually said maybe two weeks prior to that they may be releasing some of those numbers, but we'll see. Uh, the operating budget you'll see is a twenty-four million one one five nine nine four. Um, you can see the increase there of three point four million. It's a fifteen point four increase um, based on as we look through some projections. Um, the increase in the overall percentage of students overall for the school is up 58%. Uh, so that's an increase of about, uh, uh, and it doesn't list it on this slide, but 6% of the student enrollment from in-district towns has, has bumped the budget up. Um, some of the projections that we'll look at, and then, uh, so that's with the increase, but we'll talk more about that. The capital budget, you'll see it's the eighth debt service payment um, from the renovation project. Yeah, Ernie, just a quick question. You, uh, how many additional students are 
projected for? There's 58 additional students. 58 additional. Yep. That's across all, all the towns. All everybody the, that's all the individual okay. towns. Yep. Okay. So um, 58 in additional in district, which means we're taking less out of district students as well. And we'll kind of talk about how that plays. Uh, the capital budget is uh, again the eighth debt service payment for FY24, and there's a schedule in here that we'll look at. Uh, that's 1.8 million, as you can see at 12.875, which uh, for the next number of years you'll see on the debt schedule that that it's basically a $55,000 decrease, which is shared amongst all uh, seven member towns, and you'll see how uh, what the decrease is for for Berlin. Uh, if you go to the next slide, our budget drivers. Um, as we continue, you know, as we, we have um, students that come in with the curricular gaps and of course we have an increasing number of our uh, English language learner students and students with disabilities. Um, we have a percentage of about 25% of our students uh, currently uh, are receiving special education services. Um, we have, of course, with COVID and all school districts are dealing with this, the demands and the the needs of those students that have increased uh, social and emotional learning, mental health, and, and then again I mentioned special education services. And I think it's important to note that when uh, students come to ASABIT, um, we inherit that student from the standpoint we haven't had the ability to have an impact on their education prior to ninth grade when they join us. So when the application and the admission process happens, uh, it's a blind admissions process. So we don't always necessarily know um, the number of students or what the special education services those students will need until they're actually in the building. A lot of times, and I think uh, uh, most of the time, Berlin's usually pretty good with uh, through the, the regional school district to allow us to attend potentially transition meetings for some students, but it's not required for them to do so. Um, a lot of times we have parents who will who have advocated for their child their entire life who will make it known to us that hey my child has these services and are you going to be able to meet those when they come to ASBIT so those are some things that all however we do have those times where we don't know um, and, and just to kind of give you a side there's unanticipated costs and that uh, I know we have two freshmen this year in which we didn't realize we're, we're going to need specialized transportation uh, and it's about $80,000 increase to transportation uh, to that line item. Um, and, and so we'll talk a little bit more about um, how we deal with special education. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that's important, again, with 25% of your special education students, especially in the academic side, is to make sure those um, class sizes are appropriate and, and we have co-taught teachers that work in those classes. Sometimes in the career tech fields, as I've mentioned, um, the percentage of special ed students may actually be higher in the career tech program mm. than it is potentially you know across the board for the school for an example we don't we don't dictate which students can go where based on the level of service they need so we could have programs where we have 60 to 70 percent of students that are requiring special education services obviously it's a little bit of a different environment it's hands-on they're more engaged um, the the nice thing about ASABIT is the concepts that are being taught obviously relate to real world scenarios and it's a little bit easy to understand so those kids tend to thrive. Um, although we have had additional supports that we've put in to be on the career tech side of things uh, which we can talk about a little bit further. Um, we have a diversity of some programs uh, through our program of studies that's offered. We have AP classes, we have electives, we have music program uh, because <clears throat> probably about half of our 16 programs do require the kids to go on to college or biotechnology, health career, uh, health technology, um, and I'm sure if you've looked under the hood of your car and the, lately, you know, you can see there's mostly computers and it's not like you can just climb in and, and work on it. Um, of course, with the uh, inflationary costs, our CTE programs were hit very hard when it came to consumables. Uh, we generally, are, I was talking with our electrical instructor, lead instructor, and he had mentioned um, they were going to do something for the school. So we, you know, if we have an op opportunity where the students can do a real world project, for example, they were changing out, out some lighting, uh, LED lighting in one of our, a uh, couple of our programs, um, we used to be able to get a quote and have it for 30 days. 
Well, now they have quotes and they're only lasting 10 hours. <laughs> and it's even less than that, right, because of the cost is changing so much. So, so that's been difficult. Our programs do ask uh, program advisory members uh, that sit on committees uh, to make donations if they have scraps of anything that potentially students can use, like in the Weldon field. Um, so that does help. Um, but it has been um, challenging, as it has for everybody. Uh, and then meets all contractual obligations and moves us closer to a pre-COVID staffing and service level. Uh, and we can talk a little bit more about that. Uh, next slide. So <clears throat> pre-COVID, we had reduced um, seven positions, uh, reduction in force based on what was happening with COVID. Um, we had some other positions which we didn't backfill because of just through to attrition and responsibilities were transferred elsewhere. We have been um, operating without a librarian. We have a para that's in that role right now, but we'd like to bring, be able to bring that position back. Uh, we're also looking to add another elective instructor, and of course that all depends on, um, that instructor depends on what the needs or what the students are requiring. Art is a very popular uh, subject matter. If you can imagine, um, the students, I think, that, that come to Aspen are, are very creative. If you have students in metal fabrication that sign up for art, and then when they get into the shop, they're doing all kinds of metal type uh, creative art, blacksmithing, that type of stuff. Uh, so that's a very popular uh, program. Um, so we haven't determined which elective it would be yet. It's based on when students pick their program of studies. The three um, staffing changes, we have three uh, folks that were grant funded for the past um, three years, and of course with grants, uh, you can have them on a program if it's on a uh, grant for a position if it's new for certain grants, uh, and now it's time for us to move those folks off of the grant because we cannot carry them any longer. Um, a couple of them are actually through one of the ESSER grants, so that's running out anyway. Um, but of course those are, uh, we have an increased uh, number of ELL students that have uh, joined Acibit, so of course um, that's uh, vital to having those, those students succeed within the district. Uh, and then school adjustment counselor was somebody that obviously is helping with uh, social emotional type skills and, and getting the kids up, ramped up. Uh, and then the director of ed technology, the district had never had one, but of course, uh, if you can imagine <laughs> not having that position and having COVID happen, um, it was kind of a position that a lot of people shared um, and I think we I think we managed through it okay, right, Lynn? But it wasn't probably as efficient as we could have had we had this person in, in place. Um, so uh, those are the staffing positions that we're looking to, to add into this budget. Uh, next slide, please. Actually, the, those three uh, positions, so those are brand new positions that came in through grants over the years? The, the three staffing ones, yes. They've been there. They've been, and then the other ones, um, they, they've been there for the past three years. We have school adjusting councils, but we added another. The ELDT is another one. Um, and then the librarian and elective instructor we had prior to COVID. Um, we just, we haven't been able to backfill it since. Right, yeah, I was just referring to the bottom three. Yep, yep. yep. What was that? Was there two ESSER grants, and then what was the other? Was that there was technically three. Yeah, the ESSER one that was some emer emergency, more safety gear, masks, gloves, okay, gowns, okay. that type of stuff, uh, products, so schools could be ready to potentially mm. gear up to open. And then you had ESSER two, uh, and then you had an ESSER three. And, and just giving you a rough, because I don't have the numbers off That's my head. It's ESSER ESSER two was about four ninety nine, and then ESSER three was a little over. Um, a little over a million dollars. Yep. Okay. Next slide. Next slide. Sorry. So on the next one is in, it says enrollment changes. Um, so you can see at the very top, there's the breakdown um, based on the October 1, 22 number. Um, that there are 11 students in grade 9, 13 students in grade 10, 6 in grade 11, and 13 in grade 12. And then there is one, um, it should say potentially a post-secondary student um, to give you 44 uh, total positions, uh, student uh, uh, enrollees. So 
It's a uh, additional seven students from the year prior, uh, which basically is a 26.41% increase to Berlin's number by itself. Obviously, you know, uh, because you have a lower number of students, any type of increase is going to seem quite large. Uh, whereas if you see, um, you know, Marlboro, they have 47 kids, but it's an only 18% increase because of the amount of students they send. Uh, but you can kind of see that overall. You can see down at the bottom the Boylston, the Clinton, the Shrewsbury, and other. Um, those are those would have been our non-resident tuition students that we were uh, had historically brought in because we had um, less interest from in-district students applying to Asabet. Um, but that has been um, growing by leaps and bounds each year. Um, if we'd like to turn to page six. This time I remember to put page numbers on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so it's slightly getting better each year. Um, so this is the revenue plan <coughs> that looks at um, what, and again, these are projections because we have no governor's numbers. Um, what I can say is that we took a look at the past five years of um, minimum local contributions um, that ASABIT had received based on the Chapter 70 Foundation formula. Uh, and for FY23, just to give you a heads up, our per pupil for Foundation formula is 20782 right? Um, so that's basically what the state is saying that we're supposed to be spending per student um, across the board. Uh, so when they look at our numbers, our net school spending component um, is basically, that's the minimum that you can, you know, whatever the in-district number times that number right there is the minimum that you can be spending on educating the students from the seven towns. And obviously, <clears throat> the numbers change based on your student enrollment population. Uh, and within that as well, as well um, you know, it's a little bit different than, the, we'll say, the regional school district where um, there's vocational numbers um, that we have, obviously. Um, there is some special education money that's in district that they allocate. And then also there's a little bit of in money that's uh, allocated for English language learners in the vocational setting. Uh, but those are all factored into this, um, this figure. So you'll see Berlin is 703,692. Um, if you look... Um, down further, at the bottom, you'll see regional state uh, transportation. It says 650,000. That's a moving figure that Lynn has been a very sh strong and, and vocal uh, proponent for, in that <clears throat> when regional bulk schools in Massachusetts were built, uh, it was, I think it was promised at the beginning, right, when they sold it, that they would be 100% transportation reimbursement because you're asking folks to regionalize and of course there's cost with transportation of getting students to and from. Um, the problem is I guess when the, <laughs> the language came out it would said it, it basically said 100 percent subject to appropriation. appropriation right mm -hmm. that's I always say it's appropriate <laughs> but it, that's the correct language <laughs> Sub subject to appropriation. Um, so it's never been 100 percent. I think the highest has been this year at 85 mm -hmm. Um, and of course that was I think with trying to get all kids back to school and of course there was this plethora of money um, in the rainy day account and then tax revenues and that type of stuff. But I think it's been, when I started with the district in 2015, I want to say it was around 60-64%. Um, so it's fluctuated. So that's kind of a number that, um, you know, we were guessing at about 650000 but any additional cost, because we have a budget contract right, of about 1.2, um, I think is, it, it's in there, um, and there's a potential increase if they let us know before November 1 that it could go up 2.8% per year, right, so um, any additional cost that the state doesn't provide, the, the cities and towns are uh, obligated to pay that additional cost for transportation, and you'll see that when the, you see a breakdown on the next sheet, but if you get on the member community assessment, Berlin is a 97,474, all right, 
um, and then you'll kind of see how the breakdown works. Uh, on the revenue piece, you'll look there that for uh, out-of-district tuition, we don't list anything there because as we start to, as my time has come in front of the uh, select boards and finance committees, we've talked about as our numbers are increasing within district kids, we're losing that out-of-district tuition revenue to be able to help offset costs. Um, so we're not listing that um, there this year. Um, but if you turn to the next page, which is page seven. Hold on. <laughs> we'll see that um, we break it down uh, by our seven towns. Uh, and obviously the top is the minimum local contribution, which is toward the foundation budget. You see that 700,000, uh, 703,692 number. Again, that would be based on the 44 uh, students. And the other thing I should mention is that um, the funding for schools and education is always a year lag behind. You know, we have the we have those students that are based off the October one number twenty two for the budget for next year. But what I can tell you is we have fifty eight more students this year in the building than we had last year. But we're we're educating them on last year's funding. <laughs> So in transportation is a year in, in the same thing, yeah. Um, if you look down at Berlin under net busing, that 29,031, that would be the above uh, cost of the difference, right? 650 from the um, regional um, transportation reimbursement, and then based on the delta, that delta is split, split between the seven member towns. In Berlin's cost for that is twenty nine thousand one thirty one. The OPEB trust, uh, again, um, it was at thirty five thousand. We're bumping it to fifty because we'll never get to you know, uh, meet that liability at thirty five thousand. So we did a, a slight increase. Uh, you all understand what the OPEB trust is, right? Things we don't have. <laughs> Other post employment benefits, that's what opened up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, we got picked up on an audit saying, you know, you have a very strong liability out here because you don't have any money put away for retirement of folks. And right. so we had to start creating one. Yep. Um, and then the long term debt service, we highlight that because that's the, that's the renovation project. Um, so it's 66170 uh, again, that's the eighth debt service payment. Um, so the total assessment for Berlin uh, for FY24 based on projections is $801,166. Um, what that equates to, if you were to break it down per student, or and actually if you look below, you'll see there's the breakdown of students. So overall, in the total, look at 100% of the students at Asabit from industry towns Berlin's percentage of that operational is like four and a half percent, as it states there. You just have to be a little careful. Ernie and Maria uh, Silva, our business office director, most of the other towns deal with the budget, including both the long-term debt and the operating budget. Mm -hmm. In Berlin, you've always done the operating budget and then a separate line item for the Right. But other towns don't do it, so sometimes they combine them and sometimes Thank you for that clarification, yeah. Yeah, so I know that, you know, sometimes, you know, they want to break it out, and I think Berlin's always done it that way, but um, uh, Westboro does it all together, you know, in one figure. Um, so <clears throat> what that equates to, that 101, 801, 166, uh, for FY24, it's about 18208 per student. Uh, which is about $651 more than the FY23 assessment, which was uh, $17,557. So it equates to about $151,569 uh, increase, which is 24% uh, above your assessment for last year. And the student enrollment increase was 26%. Okay. Questions? Or? Capital assessment. 
So this is the uh, capital renovation type, uh, uh, the top part, the uh, capital renovation project. Uh, and you'll see there's a debt assessment, um, a couple of sheets right after it that we can look at for more in depth. Um, but it's uh, the district borrowed 27 million in FY16. Uh, and as required, we have a principal payment of uh, 1.1 million and then the interest of $712,875. Dollars um, again down fifty five thousand from last year to on July first, twenty twenty three, uh, and then on January one, twenty twenty four. Um, in addition, the project came in at uh, twenty nine million dollars, um, but the district secured a two million dollar ban, which didn't go back out to change that first um, uh, what the, they borrowed in the ban, right? So I mean the the bond rather. Um, so we have a principal of 115200 and then uh, approximately 4000 due in November 23. We're going to be looking to basically hopefully wipe that out either this year or next. So that will be going away, the BAM, um, the bottom part. And then again, um, all the percentages that you'll see on the next slide were based on a three-year rolling average of enrollment um, when the project was voted. So regardless of what your percentage is here in Berlin, your three-year average will always stay at 3.65 3 for the entire life of the, uh, the bond payment. So you'll see it's a savings of 2007 and, and it's $7. decreasing the way we did it, in other words. Some other bonds, you know, it's like floats around every year, but this right. is this table that you were given is yeah. where to go. Page 10. Actually, if you look at page 10, yeah, we've highlighted which year it is, and you'll see that Berlin is in the first column, and basically you can look at that and see what your payment will be up until 2042. So that's at least one known budget factor that we have. <laughs> yes, I like that. <laughs> Kristen may not have seen this yet, so that might be exciting. <laughs> I, I'm smiling. That's great. <laughs> so we had Berlin had fewer students when this capital assessment was yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. lucked out. Well, I yeah, was. It, it's interesting. You, you that, did. Uh, I know. Did. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, just because you know every school, every district does a little bit different. But I know of a, a school district um, and a, another vocational school that um, they had a, a rolling average. It was the way the regional agreement was written, but it was an average of five students, a minimum of five. So they mm -hmm. had they were on the hook for a building project for the minimum of five students, and they had zero students attending. Oh! So they could basically go from zero to five, one to five, and it would they'd have the same assessment regardless, um, which is nice to know. But they, you know, were dedicated to that district and wanted to make sure that they took part. So. <coughs> um, any questions on the capital debt service thing? Okay. Uh, proposed expenditures by function. Um, we'll walk through this. We I noticed a couple of things I may not be able to give you answers on, um, but we'll at least walk through it so uh, you can see. Now, the one thing I will say is so with the re with the um, the revenue plan in looking at what the state requires us to have for net school spending, um, Asabit has always built. Uh, and had a budget based on a revenue plan that was pretty much at net school spending or one to two percent above. Um, generally, what we find for our surrounding communities is that their budgets are anywhere between. We've seen them one twenty five. Yeah, yeah. The larger you know, your next door neighbor um, is anywhere between twenty seven percent to thirty five percent. Some of the more affluent towns, as I was on the website today, it, they're at 201%. So they're double of what the state requires them to actually pay. Uh, so, uh, uh, um, require them to put towards education. Uh, and, it, and it's all, you know, just based. And the, the challenge for ASABIT is that being so close to net school spending, that if we, um, don't have if we don't spend all of the money in the way in which it's reported, we end up with a situation which happened this past year, in which um, 
we had to sit, well, we, we had to send back uh, money because we were over ex excess and deficiency, Ugh. right? So um, that's what happened. Yeah. If you remember at the beginning of the year, we had to send some money back, and it was an apportionment based on um, what you had for percentage of students at the time, right when that happened. So no, I'm sure nobody likes to send money back. <laughs> no, Except for us. Where? We like coming. Yeah, back. I know, I know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so uh, in building the budget, some of the things that have happened, and we've been able to offset some of those costs with out-of-district tuition money, right? Uh -huh. Because you've had less in-district students in the, in the uh, building, and that obviously has been changing over the past four years. So, um, you know, we see a large, obviously there's a large increase here. Uh, it looks huge, but we have multiple factors, I think, happening where you have the um, inflation costs, what the Department of Ed has been saying to us is that you should pretty much um, build your budgets. They've been, they had a, a webinar with our, the business managers in, in the state, basically build your budget with a 10% increase to, to the, um, the student uh, number of 20,782. Um, if we looked at what ASABIT had over the past five years, uh, last year the number was 7% to that student number which is what we're currently at, which was the 20,782. Uh, the year prior to that was three, and then it was one because that was the COVID year, but we've seen it progressively getting higher. So you have that happening. You've got the uh, decrease in out-of-district tuition, which helped offset some of the assessments, right, to member towns. Um, you've got the cost inflation that's happening, and you've got that increase in student enrollment. Do, do you have a whole number amount on the decrease in now uh, district uh, tuition? I know last year you had some of those numbers. <laughs> yeah, so we, so when I started here, we were probably applying, I think, about five and a half million dollars towards the revenue side of things. Uh, and so it's gone down, went down to five, went down to four, four and a half, four, um, three, three and a half, four, three. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know. I can tell you this year in the freshman class, um, there are 11 students from out of district. So the, uh, cool. the other 11, 11 students just in the freshman class. <clears throat> if you look, but at, right, just in the freshman class, there yeah. are total of all that yep. all of this. If you actually looked at the, it was it was all students that applied in the district ended up getting in. Right, they made this and put on the wait page, list. Page five. You know, they go through the um, admission policy, and then X number of students we know we can take, so um, we put a slot for them for September. Well, come September, they choose not to come, okay? So now you go through the list of kids on the waiting list, and they may say, no, I'm staying where I am. So then you go out of district and say, is there anybody out of district that wants to fill one of those slots? I know you had a lot of moving pieces this year because I, I spoke to the nurses multiple times, <laughs> nurse to nurse. It was a very tricky year for you all. Well, and we had some changes I know. in personnel. Yep. I mean, the other, the other component, too, is we operated during COVID. We were open. Right. You know, during the, the year in which most folks were home, our students came in on their correct career and technical week, <clears throat> had their, uh, because we said if we're, if we're in an um, educational delivery model in which we're preparing kids to go out to work, right? Places went, places were going to work, except for that two-week window where the state shut down. Very we difficult to do remotely. We, yeah, <laughs> we, we need to, yeah, you can't really weld or do carpentry. Uh, although we do have virtual welders in the shop, um, but you can't weld virtually um, and have the same effect. So, um, you know, so when most people were home, we were operating, we actually had some of our local... Uh, parents who have parent had a student at Asabit and a student at, at their local uh, sending school complaining with the Board of Health saying, hey, what, why is it that Asabit's operating? And obviously we're a little bit different. We can control our cohorts of kids and the way they're sectioned for their week about. Um, and we have a very, you know, if you haven't been to Asabit, we'd love to have you tour. 
but there's very large spaces, you know, between the shop areas and the hallways and things of that nature. So uh, I made it easier. But it's a right now it's 214. You asked the number, 214 out of district kids. 214 on district kids. That's that's totally They're yeah. rolling off. The yeah, they yeah I can see the uh, numbers uh, look yeah. um, obviously very when nice I for that. started, just to give you an idea, uh, we used to get about 179, 185 applications in district kids. The remainder of that, at that time, we used to take 275 students. So another, the most of those kids would get in unless they didn't meet certain criteria, and then we'd take about 100 uh, per year. So there was about 400 students um, or more in the in the building at one time. Now we'll still take probably some out of district students in the upper grade levels, most mostly in the sophomore year, junior year we don't usually do it because students have to have at least two years in their career tech field in order to get certified in that field. So we don't generally do it unless it's a transfer from another tech school. Um, so. And again, these numbers, you know, we're hoping that um, we, we're hoping that we've, you know, made some decisions that were above. You know, if the state came to us and said, you know, it's going up to 12 percent or 15 percent, um, you know, we may have to come back to you and talk about that. But you know, again, we have to meet the net school spending of what the state's saying we're required, because <clears throat> if you don't address it in that year, they kind of let you do it. They kind of let you carry it for two years, but then afterwards they say, okay, now you have to, because you haven't met it in this year, and it was, I'll just throw a number out, $350,000, and then all of a sudden now this year, because you were already behind last time, you technically have to spend that much more in your budget that you've allocated, and if you don't meet it second year, now you're paying for, say the second year is three hundred fifty, and then 400000 but that third year you're now having to spend seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars more than you actually budgeted in order to meet the state's net school spending requirement so if you look at it you'll it's interesting to kind of look at the whole list of you know what they're required and what people spend most of the vogue schools are around 100 102 104 105 percent everybody else is up in the 127 to 100 and and on that final page if you know the fy 23 adjusted budget um, your assessment last year <coughs> was based on a higher budget, but it had to be changed because we had to send back money. So we sent you back some money. Yeah, it was the um, but this is really lower than the budget was approved for last year. Right. Yeah, the other component too that you folks were a part of, uh, because you were getting such, such small money, but if you recall, at one point in time, the state had said that, that towns may be able to use some of their ESSER money. It was something that was floated, right, that they could potentially reduce their minimum local contribution. At the time, I think for Berlin, it was going to be something like fifteen or $17,000. They opted not to use it. Um, so that was something else that, yeah. uh, uh, in the end, the governor didn't actually vote. Um, and... We had it set up so we used our some out of district tuition, right, to honor that to our towns. And the state said, no, 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 they're not meeting their, their minimum local requirement. You're going to need to have them pay that. So if you can imagine. So people, Berlin was spot, Margaret was spot. <laughs> right. We <laughs> were the only town that paid, yeah. said keep the yes or money. Right. And then we turned around and said to the other municipalities, they said that they. Sorry. wanted it back and then they had to give it back to us right. Mm -hmm. right I think if I'm remembering that discussion around this it just wasn't enough money to be bought to bother with the whole process it was right. it just wasn't a big right. enough for Berlin, yeah, yeah, for it, was, Berlin yeah. it was minor because yeah. you had to pay you would have had to in the next year you would have been paying your whatever the new assessment was plus that additional anyway yeah it, it just mm -hmm. didn't make it the sense. numbers didn't work that's no. all I, I don't remember details I just remember that we looked at it and said no thank you <clears throat> right uh, Ernie on the you said that the you know meeting with the state and they're saying when you're building your budget plan on 10 percent is that 10 percent uh on top of fiscal 23 going into fiscal 24. oh that's on 10 percent when they're looking at the numbers for minimum um, per, per student contribution. yes but for for which which year based on off of 23. 
off of 23. Yeah, so, so, moving forward. so did they, in that session when they said, when they said project that, that was that a consumer price index increase? What was driving it? What did they say about, instead of uh, projecting 3%, you should project 10, why? Yeah, they, well, because this current year was based on a 7% increase. And because of inflationary costs, okay. and so from 22 to 23, it was it seven percent. Okay. So now they're saying because of inflation and because it's gone up over the, you know, yeah. it's been increased okay. by the uh, the feds. That, you know, we should look at a 10 percent increase. Any that, any factors other than sort of inflation? No, I, prices? I was on for part of it. I mean, it is they did record it, so I could always push it out if you're interested mm -hmm. in looking at it. But um, the other interesting thing is just with the. Uh, besides that factor, which in, uh, affects your MLC uh, and what our net school spending, what we're required to uh, educate students, <clears throat> even if we had left it at maybe zero, right, and not done anything, it increases the budget by $2.8 million because of the 58 more kids we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like we're There's having, mm -hmm, it's almost like factors. triple or quadruple yep. jeopardy here yep. that's, that's happening for this year. So I'm not quite sure, you know, and it, the interesting thing is um, folks, I think in the past, obviously it was good to have that off, to off some of the assessments, uh, but we actually get, you know, we get more um, money from students that are from in-district than are out-of-district. Mm -hmm. The out-of-district, and you have more benefits, obviously, if you're in-district, because transportation is included with the student. Um, for out-of-district, they pay a set rate, but then all the transportation costs are paid by them. Uh, and then any special education costs were also uh, passing on to the, the uh, district uh, folks. So, any questions? I'm mean, still going back. What was the exact reason for the out of district? You're just playing zero for the out of district tuition? Um, why there's no number for it for the revenue? I know um, it's getting lower, but why right. zero? So, so <clears throat> if we applied it to the, the way the budget is, we wouldn't be meeting what our net school spending okay. is. So in essence, what's happening is then our member towns are not paying their required contributions. That's because the auto districts are paying less. So when you average them in, yeah, it, it, it messes it all up. Yeah, right, yeah it yep. has nothing to do with Get that it. really. It's, it's interesting. And you know, the other piece of it too is if you were to look at the budget, you know, we only have 110,000 in here for capital, right? And yet with the capital renovation project that we had, that was pretty much the roof, uh, our heating, ventilation, air, con air conditioning system, outer doors, windows, all the energy efficiency type stuff, sprinkler systems throughout the building. Uh, it didn't address anything to do with like parking lots, anything to do with fixtures, furniture, and equipment. Generally in a renovation type project, whether it be new or a renovation, there's about 15% that you would allocate to FF&E, fixtures, furniture, and equipment. Um, we allocated, I think about Mm, $25,000 or something like that. Um, so out of, the, out of the grant for that because that was not the priority to get, you know. I new. mean, they increased the science lab, but they didn't want to buy the new furniture for the Correct. science Correct. Krista, maybe we Correct. should have sent them those file cabinets. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the ones with the acorns? I'm not <laughs> sure they would have wanted those. I'm sorry, I had a little inside joke. No. Yeah. <laughs> the biotech company, the biotech shop may be able to take your old squirrel. <laughs> there you know. go. <laughs> Clean them up and then your metal folks could have uh, worked with them. Right. Yeah. So obviously we Weld will, something we'll out of those, so make a piece of art. Yeah, uh, on the instruction side, um, is that uh, all just, is that just uh, um, teacher wages? Uh, it was pretty is that funny. just coming yeah. outside of the uh, like, <coughs> yep. you know, retirement stuff? Teacher like wages, that. increase of the staffs that we have that were there. Okay. Uh, so, so the, um, what was it, like, uh, it was around like 1.7 million or 1.8 million. So you have, what, three, though, that were previously on a grant. You're looking to add two positions back in. So they're basically a total of five, five. full-time equivalent being added in. Yeah. And do you know what the general number of like what their contractual, you no, know, if you weren't putting, uh, increasing headcount, what the contractual percentage uh, what it is right from now, salary we're, increases? We're, well, we're percentage. in the midst of negotiation, so I don't have to figure it. We have something that we're hoping that. They have <laughs> talked about, and there's a couple of things that they're gonna have to absorb in here. Yeah. And contract negotiations is one of them. 
Okay. okay. Are they so? Did their contract is ending at the end of the school year? Their or? contract actually ended at the last of the last school year. Oh, that's so they're last working without year. a contract right now. Okay. Or they're working under the. Oh, let's the hope you don't contract. have a Woburn on your hands. I don't think so. <laughs> we have the very dedicated staff and outstanding staff. And you have a great staff from a yes. parent of a graduate. So excellent. In, in the uh, insurance of active employees from 1437 to 6437 what's the Which uh, line 500 5200 what's the uh, reason for that huge jump which one is it line 5200 5, page insurance 11. of active employees um, we have a number of empl uh, employees well two things have happened actually last year um, I gotta make sure I get my. Um, <clears throat> I gotta make sure I get my insurance companies right. Fallon went out of the healthcare business mm -hmm. for commercial, right, mm -hmm. and went to Medicaid. Mm -hmm. um, we had a new pro new provider come in, or several providers that right entertained us, and um, they basically low cut their percentages. And of course, then now this year, the percentages are going in the opposite direction. And I even remember saying to them at the point in time when each of them were presenting. You know, it would be better if you don't, you know, shortchange me this year to get in the door and then go in the opposite way and double what you're, you know, doing, which in essence then equals out over two years. But when you have a budget that reflects that, right? And we've also had several, um, th so that's one component. And the other component is we had several um, uh, folks with um, high claims. Serious high, illness. High, high, claims. High, claims. Yeah, high claims, yeah, is the best way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what, like, percentage-wise, what the insurance companies directly hit you with? No. So we have an insurance advisory council that we have, and we have two consultants that are through NFP, um, and we have a GIC-like program. We're fully insured, um, but we have not. Uh, our claims data looked good. We were kind of in a sweet spot, but we generally won't because we've only been with them for a year. Um, they're looking to get us claims data uh, or hopefully some percentages in the March, April time frame. So it's like, you know, flying a plane while we're building it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's the challenge. And I, I can look to get you more information if that's... Yeah, I mean, if, I mean you're looking at that because what, uh, what is that, a 300% uh, mm -hmm. increase? That's, mm -hmm. When you see numbers like that, you expect you've increased your headcount of employees or people taking insurance right. significantly. Yeah, and, I, and I'd have to look because I think, um, you know, years ago we had Blue Cross Blue Shield, we had a lot of people on the plan. And then obviously then you swap from that plan and then people say, well, my spouse has a better insurance, so I'm going to then jump to that insurance. Again, I'd have to come back and I'd have to let you know as to whether or not we had an influx of people in addition to the, you know, thing, other things that we've mentioned. You also might have an influx of, um, like, single to family. Mm -hmm. That's the ratio. Yeah. 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 The other one, Scott, was uh, the 5100 line, the retirement. Yeah, they had to. Yes. Yeah, so the 5100. So what happened with there, so if you were, I don't know if you recall, but a number of years back, um, I think the district found out about Mass State Retirement. And I'm going to guess it was the 14, they found it in FY13 that ASAPIT as well as eight additional vocational schools and 31 other governmental agencies, somebody had not flipped the switch for them to pay, for them to be paying their portion of Mass State Retirement. So what had happened was the entire time, this, you know, we've, and those would be folks at our food service cafeteria, right. all non- It was non-professional. Non-professional, you know, non educated Edu edu educator license required. Um, so in FY13, they had sent a letter that basically said, or maybe it was 14, um, oh, you owe this amount of money, um, and it was like for $1.5 million. And so at the it time, was more than that. yeah, it may have been more than that. <laughs> I'm just giving you. So basically, they said, well, you know, where is it coming from, and all this type of stuff. And they said, oh, just go back to your towns and have them pay it. <laughs> and they're like, well, that's not how school finance works, right? You think this is the state. Um, they don't, their agencies don't talk to each other. Um, 
But anyway, so 14 and 15 actually are still on the books and they're holding. They don't send us a bill for them right yet. But in addition, what happened was they started to come in and based on the number of folks that you had off would be the amount that they'd send us a bill for. We initially entered it, uh, we initially entered it into the budget process at 250,000. The problem is it's, it's, was, it's been growing since then and we haven't increased that number. So that is a way to rectify the number as the increase. So the 14 and 15, um, last year there was legislation filed from the Department of Revenue to actually wipe out 14 and 15. And the way they wrote the language, they included all the governmental agencies and they didn't add regional school districts. <laughs> which also meant vocational schools. <laughs> so, so now there's legislation that's been refiled from the Department of Revenue to the legislators to, to add regional schools so that we could wipe out 1415 and then carry on with our normal uh, percentage of the student. Uh, the which is what the are. administrators were trying to do is to say, going forward, we'll, we'll pay this, right. even we though it's going to be a dramatic increase in one year because it was like $300,000. Right. But to go back five years that you didn't send us a bill for, yeah. you know. Right. And, and again, some of that what was probably offset by out of, out of uh, district tuition, mm -hmm. you know, as they tried to, you know, ease the assessment to the towns. Okay. So if, if the state actually does move forward and include the schools, right. we should go back to more of the normal number or would not even well, 259? No, I think our number is going to be that moving forward. Seven, the 750 yeah. or so. Yeah. Well, um, Christian, you can appreciate that because you know what, and June too, you know what you pay the retirement board, right? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was a 60 some odd thousand dollar increase this year. Yeah. yeah. So, Scott, <coughs> if and when you're ready, I have a few things about the budget I could share. Sure. <laughs> yes. All right. So I plugged in these numbers into the draft budget version six, which you don't have because for Valentine's Day I did a new budget. Because <laughs> why not? Um, so this is the most recent version that I'm working on. Um, and you can see the budget here for ASABET uh, is broken out between the regular assessment and the capital assessment as we discussed. So the 26.4% increase is in there. That's a 153,576% increase. Um, and the decrease on the capital of $2,007 is in there as well, which is a 2.9% decrease. Um, my concern obviously is, you know, we've had BBRSD come forward as well, looking for, they presented two different budgets. Um, one was a 20 and 22% increase, the other was a like a bare bones that they call it level service funded at 12 and 13 percent so my struggle now is to try to piece it all together and make it all work um and i guess the question that i would have for you ernie is i know that we're all trying to get back up to pre-covid levels Mm -hmm. Is there a way at all that some of those increases could be phased in over a couple of years? Or is this part of a phased approach and this really is just reflective <clears throat> of the number of additional students that are coming from Berlin? Yeah, so, so we've, so the budget we have, we based it on the revenue, right, of what the state's going to require, and then we worked on that backwards. Okay. So for some reason, if the state goes back or... You know, again, let's hope it, it's less than what we've presented. Um, what we would do is, yeah, when we, you know, obviously we're not tied to that number because the, the final state budget isn't until July, right? When, when the, uh, the House of Reps look at it, the state Senate, the conference committee, and then the governor finally finds the budget. That's when we'll have a real number as to what we, we know. Um, By the time you go to town meeting, we should know 
right. we should what, know if what it's your happen. Chapter 70 money will be. Right. We're guesstimating it here, right. and we have to be careful when we guesstimate it, because if we make a mistake in one city, then the whole budget mm -hmm. is gone, yeah. and it could be right. just a few dollars. Right. So um, could that figure change? Yes. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, the um, school committee has not voted on the budget as yet. Right. They're having a hearing March. Uh, no, tomorrow. Well, we're having a we're having a meeting next Tuesday. No, no, no. But we're going to have the hearing. Oh, the yes, 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 hearing. Yeah. yeah. Next, um, what is it? The uh, seventh, seventh yep. of next month, at w which the school committee really can't vote things until after they have their hearing. Okay. Things have been a little backed up this year. A lot of reasons. Um, one is, you know, new folks mm -hmm. in certain chairs, okay? Mm -hmm. So hopefully if you folks can see your way clear to put this into the budget for town meeting, it is very possible that prior to t uh, town meeting, it could be reduced depending upon how much money schools get in Chapter 70 money. We cannot increase it um, if anything happens, and I have a few things to talk to Ernie about how he's going to absorb, okay, right. already, yeah. okay? But, but I think to answer your question, yes. There will be things that if we have to shift and go without another year, we'll, have, we'll do that. Okay. You know, we just, the other component, though, is we have to make sure we met, meet net school spending. So again, Absolutely. depending on how we build it, that's like, how, how do we, if we cut certain things and then we say, okay, well, we cut this much out of the budget because of X, Y, or Z, all right, now what happens because I may have fixed it for this year, but then now it's going to catch up to me next year or the year prior after. So right. And it's, I, a, it's the show game. Yeah, you don't want to kick right? it down the, the road, <laughs> and I understand that. And I also understand the revenue projections. A, a much smaller percentage of the town's budget comes from state aid, right. Where, but that's obviously, I'm level funding it right now yeah. at what FY23 was. Um, and if you go here, you'll see I'm at, f uh, where am I at? For state aid, two sixty one four seventy five, wow. and because obviously with Governor Healy being new, yeah. and her number is not coming out till March, usually we can pretty conservatively and comfortably go with the governor's budget. Right. I can't even go there right now. I have to go with last year's. With the general understanding that it doesn't go down, it may not go up much, <laughs> but it generally well, doesn't go down. In the current out. environment, it shouldn't go down. It shouldn't. I hope <laughs> that right. they have a few bucks in their pocket. Right. Right. And so, and basically, and this is something that I'll share, you know, we can talk a little bit more about this as we go. Um, but what it does is I'm trying to basically, and I explained this to the FinCom and to the school committee when they were here last week, um, our towns operate, our town departments are operating on really razor thin budgets. In fact, I'm really impressed that departments put forward decreases in some of their line items this year to try to offset mm. some of those inflationary contractual increases that we all know sure. everybody is facing. Um, you know, we even gave them the opportunity to put like a, what I called a supplemental funding request for what they felt was additional. Mm -hmm. I only got $65,000 in supplemental funding and those were actually really needs to maintain level services in the, for the most part. Yeah. Um, and we can't even fund all of that. So I look at where we can make cuts. There aren't a lot of places really at all. Um, and you know what I we spoke to the school BBRSD about was you know where we're at and trying to figure out what we can do within our existing numbers without having to raise taxes by looking at the excess sure. levy capacity. And that's always the the balancing act. Totally recognizing that these are estimates. Right. But I have, you know, we, we have to kind of go off of estimates right now because I also have to be able to tell them what percentage we can support um, because their increases were unexpectedly high um, for this year as well. So it's well, a also, when you go to other departments and you say we want a 1% rate, you know, increase, and they say, well, the school's got. X amount, okay? Right. And it's a little difficult to explain. We do understand that. Sure. 
I mean, yeah, and I, the only thing I would add, obviously, we have an increased number of students. So, if I had, you know, some of the towns we're dealing with, they got, you know, they have a, they had a reduction in students, and their percentage still went up, only by a couple percent, but you know, still. So, I mean, from that standpoint, if I had, you know, no increase or less, and I came to you with a twenty-six percent. I'd say okay. I, there's no way. To, obviously, everything's justified. Everybody can justify their own budget, right? Yeah. So, but no, a per student assessment. Get, I understand. Yeah. Oh I yeah. Mean. So, but no, we're obviously, you know, it's it's the budget's not concrete until we, you know, get the. Is this the first town you've been with? This is the very first town we met oh. with. Yep. We we generally will go to Hudson in January, and they had asked me. I think it was um, for. The 13th, as oh no, the 7th of February, and then they came back to me and said, "Hey, we realize you probably aren't, you know, anywhere near your budget. We'll we'll bump you out to March." I'm like, "Thank you." <laughs> so, <laughs> March, and I, I think it's actually, March, I think it's um, what was it? Uh, I think it's the Monday, March, maybe the 13th or 12th or something like that. It's the a, point is, Monday though, is that I think between now and sometime in March. We'll have a lot, of we'll have a lot more information. Right. Number one, the school committee hasn't really reviewed this budget as yet. Right. Not, not in depth, yeah. Not, hasn't reviewed this budget at all. And there are other municipalities coming up shortly. So sure. I think we have to do what's best for kids, but we also have to recognize what's going on in the municipalities. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thanks, Lynn. Yeah. 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 Bernie, to help me understand this, the, the minimum local contributions. Mm -hmm. So you say the state wants to, uh, uh, needs to make sure that you're spending, yeah. you know, the minimum. So as I look at the, at the functions on the back, yeah. what does the state consider to, in that they minimum? Don't, they don't, uh, they don't care about the function? They don't, when they look at that, um, the, what they look at it is the total when you submit that last oh, okay. Okay. slide that yeah. you're reporting yep. uh, and I would say with the budget we basically have redone our chart of accounts so that when you you can hit a report it'll give you the function codes for each of those line items uh -huh. to be able to report it in there's multiple different schedules that we have to send to the state so what happens is um, they look at it from the standpoint that it's the when I say minimum local contribution that's based on the chapter 70 formula which is probably, if you open an Excel spreadsheet, six to seven pages to the right is how long the formula yeah. goes. <laughs> and there's two people that can explain it. One of them is Roger Hatch that just uh, recently retired. And um, the other person is supposedly the new person that, <laughs> that took his place. You know, they, they, you know, they can't really show you the formula and, because literally we can run our contribution. If you look at contributions and we ran basically what the state said, it's telling us, even though we have, you know, in, in order to get 100% of the students, the number actually comes up 100.8%. 100.8. How do I go and tell you? <laughs> I have always this is said, what it, you know. mm, okay. said to you folks that you should look at the increase in the budget. I just ask you to also look at what was proposed for last year because mm. What is listed here is what was actually spent after we had to give money back, okay? And the <coughs> percentage increase, obviously, of the school that you are, because there are seven more students. So, um, again, I think we need to get back to you, or you need to come on March 7th, <laughs> um, and after we've had an opportunity to have discussions with a couple of other towns and we've had an opportunity to finalize things and actually finally take the vote mm -hmm. and know what chapter 70 funds are going to be mm -hmm. yeah. because we don't know right. and you're right Kristen Mo I mean I do not expect them to decrease right I expect them to increase unfortunately Berlin is considered a rich community and you only get 17 and a half percent right. and um, you're supposed to pick up the rest so 
That's the challenge. You guys have always been very good to us, and I thank mm -hmm. you for that. Yeah. And I hope if you have questions or whatever that you, you do ask them. Yeah. And, you know, you need time to digest this too. Sure. Just in closing, I will say that we have, as a district, uh, been supporting uh, Berlin every year. Um, usually through the chief of police, we schedule for them to do their PT exams on our track. Um, so they'll come out and um, we'll give them, a, it's usually a Saturday morning. Uh, and then this past year, we've been doing some community projects. I know we did the senior mm -hmm. uh, living where we repainted all the uh, main uh, interiors uh, of the common areas within that uh, area. Uh, and we've also done some other stuff with uh, your antique, um, the, what, what is it? I always get stumbled on this. I always stumble on your, oh, your small room. The curial the, storage. Yes, thing. that's what it is. The, right. Oh, or, or, did you, or did you work on the hearse house, yeah. too? I think, I think, I think some of the kids worked on the hearse house. Yeah. 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 And I think in the cemetery. Or the Bullard house, yeah. maybe? Yeah, and I think in the, in the, at one point in time, when they were looking to re, uh, finish the second floor of the, um, they did a nice DPW, job upstairs in the right. 1870. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, they did, 1870 as well. Yeah, so we'll continue to look uh, to, at ways to help the, uh, the town Is there anything something. we can get back <clears throat> to you folks with? No, I think I understand the situation. I don't mm -hmm. know. Sure. It's, it's very clear and, and understandable and clearly laid out. And, um, you know, we'll uh, wait for as information evolves and it's going to yeah. evolve on our end as well sure. um, our revenues are pretty set at this point um, because our state aid number is so small but um, you know maybe they'll surprise us this year yeah right was I, a big state aid. <laughs> I didn't realize you became the chair because I looked on the website <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're not That's up to awful. date yeah. well I didn't yes. know. I, I think we need to help us with. Ernie, yeah, I think yeah. we need that yeah, student. Nice. We need that, that student now. Yeah, yeah. yeah we need the student. For recording, but one of your emails has met the quota, so it keeps bouncing back. <laughs> yes, exactly. I've switched over. They still have an old email on there. <laughs> okay. But thank you. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Appreciate you very it. Much. Appreciate thank the time. You. Thank you. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks, Ernie. Have a good night. You too. Yep. Fred is waiting. All right. Just for a minute. Yeah, athletics get way more than me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe Fred, you can go use their track. Oh, oh my gosh! There's a lot of teams over there. There's just you know, very few of you. I know. <laughs> That's because my mom. She's not even half a oh, team. No, hold on, I'll wait. Cause I gotta pull this button up. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let me pull up your budget here. What's, what's your number there, Fred? Four two two. Four two two. Or sixty five. Line sixty five. Four two two. Which one are you doing first? Or are you doing? Highway with supplemental. Uh, we can do four two two first. Four two two. I will get it up on the screen for you all in just a moment. Oh. There we be. Yeah. So the majority of our costs actually went up just because the cost of services went up. Um, I tried to keep it pretty close. Like last year when we, when we did it, we basically level funded it. We kept it where it was. And, uh, and we just moved things around within the budget because we were kind of work we're going to do it. Um, this year it did go up, like I said, because of just the services that um, supply and stuff. Um, we were able to drop a few things like on that truck equipment, the maintenance tires. Um, we had gone through and, and found that we didn't need two trucks worth of tires, so we were able to take some off of that. I'm trying to get um, to your expense page, Fred. Hold on one second. There we go. Yeah, that one right there. All right, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so you can like actually read it. Yeah, um, so, and then as you start coming down, like the parts for repairs, again, um, that went up $200. We were basing, we tried to go up uh, an average between 2 and 3% at the most, um, because parts now, I think a lot of people are still using the whole COVID thing to hide behind, you know, we're going to jack your prices up because mm -hmm. um, we don't have it, but in reality, there's like seven on the shelf. Yeah. Um, so we were trying to uh, plan for it, uh, should we need it. Um, 
last year we didn't have inspection stickers in it. Um, it was just something we didn't think about. Um, this year we actually included it because we had something to go by for last year. Um, last year was the first time we put together a budget. Um, and and it, it came out right in the end because we ended up turning money in. Um, luckily, we don't know how, but we did. Uh, the same with the clean and degrease or things like that. Um, what are the inspection support. stickers for specifically here? Um, it's basically all the mass state inspection stickers for the trucks, uh, the loaders, okay. uh, the road equipment. Okay. Um, and we actually save a little bit. Uh, we have a company that comes in, Acton Auto Inspectors, uh, so they come right to our facility and do everything in one day. Um, if they have the time, if not, they reschedule for another day. Um, and that was just not budgeted before? Or? Yeah, it was just something that, like, we didn't have a budget to go by the previous year, so we were basically trying to put everything together. Um, so that was something we overlooked. Okay. Um, because These expenses weren't <laughs> itemized. They were just... Yeah, we, we had nothing to go with. Yeah. Um, so we kind of, like, over the past two years built it. So at least we know where the money's going. Um, so that's why a lot of stuff, because even as we get down into it, even for this year, we actually broke it down for our own office supplies, because that too was never never something we got into. Um, the travel dues, meetings, and training, um, that was always something that was in there. Um, we actually increased a little bit because um, we have more employees now, and Bay State Roads is offering more uh, specialized training that we can uh, we can put in for and, and go to. Uh, the drug and alcohol testing stayed the same because that's a random. Um, we, we've already had two people called in this year for it already, um, and you never know when your number's going to get picked. Um, the uniform rental, that all stayed the same. Uh, clothing and boots, again, I had to adjust it because uh, we anticipated the, the other hires, um, so that's going to be uh, part of the uniforms. And the, the, the boots, is it's a boot reimbursement that we get every year. Um, up to um, $150, I think it is, per person uh, to buy a pair of safety boots. Uh, again, the cell phones went up um, because of the extra employees. Um, the traffic light paint went up, as you can see, significantly because um, in the past we didn't have to do uh, Soy Hill Road um, going up over from Pleasant Street to Route 62. Um, that actually jumped us up $11,000. Um, just this past uh, springtime. Um, so that's why that increased. And of course, the, the cost of paint has gone up. Um, they do have a different type of paint out that's, that we can actually use through our sprayer as we do the crosswalks, the stop lights, things like that. That's almost like the, the bead that the state puts down on the highways where it's thicker. And, and it usually lasts for you know, several years um, without needing maintenance. Uh, we're actually going to try a five-gallon bucket this year on a couple stop lines to see if, if it will work and how long we can get and maybe we wouldn't have to paint every year. Um, and if it does, it'd be nice if later on down the road we could commit the funds to just doing all the yellow lines with it and then get five years out of it and, and then obviously move over to the light and then just like go back and forth. So every year we're not spending uh, for traffic lines. Um, we actually did change when we have them done in the past. They were always done in the fall. Um, we've actually changed it to be done in the springtime, you know, preferably before Memorial Day. Um, because that way you can get the whole summer and fall out of it. Whereas we were doing it in the fall and you're basically plowing it off. Um, <laughs> so it, it seemed like a waste. So, um, so you do all the lines in town? Or you've been on the pace of doing all, all yeah. of them every year? Yeah, so every year um, they'd always, I, I, from what I understand, back in the past, it was actually when you appropriate to have it done twice a year. Um, but I always remember them coming in once. Uh, and it was usually around October. It was just before it was freezing because everyone was afraid that the guns were going to freeze up, the paint wasn't going to come out. Um, so that's another reason why we did it in the, in the springtime, um, so we can actually get a full year out of them. Um, the stop lines, uh, the majority of them, depending on the high traffic roads, uh, we do every year. Um, sometimes we may only have to do uh, the word stop and not the stop line. So it, it kind of varies depending on where you are traffic-wise, um, how much they get beat up. Um, especially the ones up here you'll see in the center of town where the cars always turn on them. Um, from the construction on Highland Street, a day later it was, it was a mess. Um, eventually that'll be, that'll be normal again. 
Um, so that's with the traffic thing. Um, our internet stayed the same. It'd be nice if it got better service, but it is. Uh, our street signs actually went up a little bit uh, because the cost of steel um, went up, and that's what our street uh, street poles are made out of. Um, they're now, I think they're $52 a piece for one post, and uh, and it hurts every time one gets hit and there's no insurance and, you know, no one gets the, the person who did it. So we front the bill for it. Um, the same with the sign, the signs, they're aluminum. Um, the UPM coal patch, um, that did go up too because with the price of um, fuel going up, asphalt went up. Uh, so UPM is an, an actual, it's a performance coal patch. Uh, it's, it's almost like Rice Krispies, so it's really gooey and sticky. Uh, so that's what we use in the winter time um, because uh, it just works a lot better uh, because it's got a little more asphalt in it. Um, that stuff too you can pave over. Uh, regular coal patch where it's dry, it doesn't. You can't uh, patch over it. And that's only four hundred dollars, or four. Um, yeah, because um, we only use this like on an emergency basis. If someone reports a pothole, um, we keep roughly about a ton on, on a on a pallet in the garage that we can throw in a bucket and shoot out and fill a hole. Um, primarily, we have a hot top box that we can go off and get hot top in the winter, um, and it'll stay hot inside the box all all day long at uh, 270, 70, 75 degrees. Um, so we can actually go around and fill potholes with hot top, um, which is what they would do in the past couple days. Um, so that's why we actually knocked that down. We knocked it down from the previous year too, um, because if we can, you know, fill it once, be done with it, move on. You know, that's what we're trying to do. Um, but that's why we always have that on hand. Um, it hurt because that's roughly around one hundred and thirty-five dollars a ton now, um, as of a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> uh, our catch basin blocks, uh, tubs and sumps. So that went up a little bit um, because obviously the price of concrete had gone up and we're actually planning to do some drainage work on the lower half of uh, Lyman Road uh, this summer. Um, so we're going to need the supplies to, to perform that. Uh, we do have, uh, as we get further down, um, one of them is for uh, pipes. We do have piping now. Um, the funds that we're looking for is actually just to add to it. Um, and the same with the framing grates, those would be for what's on top of the basin that actually catches the water. Um, those we only have two of. Um, one we just used on a sump that we put in on Lancaster Road. Um, so the drainage pipe, um, for what we have figured there, we have a couple pieces we have to put in on Lancaster Road. Um, so this will be for that and then we'll have some for later. Um, so for the guardrail and the bridge maintenance, um, again, the cost of guardrail is crazy through the roof. Um, when the insurance companies can fix it, Bartlett Consolidated usually does a lot of the accident work in town. Um, if the company doesn't have, or if the homeowner, um, the vehicle owner, they don't have insurance, uh, it falls back on us. Bartlett won't fix it unless we pay them to do it, and it's just cheaper for us to do it. And we used to have a stockpile of uh, guardrail, but we went around and changed a lot of the stuff we had in town. Um, so now that's almost depleted. Um, so that's where the, the guardrail, the bridge maintenance uh, would fall into, like if we have to do um, repairs to the, the railings and things like that. Um, we did uh, this bridge down here two years ago. It was right around the time uh, the railroad company had the road shut down when they did their upgrade to the crossing. That's when we went in and did work for that. Um, I'm actually trying to get the state to allow us to go in off of Route 70. Uh, back when, um, like 2011, when they, or 2001, when they did a lot of the, uh, they closed off a lot of the parking spots that were over by the dam. Um, there was a bundle of guardrail left down the bank, and, and it's still sitting. <laughs> so we're still trying to work on if we recover it, can we keep it? Uh, I, I'm not hopeful. Um, the stone and gravel stayed the same uh, because we didn't use much last year um, and what we do have now I think will be in good shape for when we do our drainage work uh, so we shouldn't need to purchase any. Um, so the sky worker, it's, it actually you can see as I drop down, um, you'll, you'll notice over the next uh, few years it'll keep going down because now the town has their own bucket truck 
um, we'll never ever probably lose the line item um, because their truck is 75 feet and then they have a different truck that'll come in that can actually go higher with the saw blade and cut it and bring it down um, just because there, there's trees out there we can't do um, and they're technical um, they're a lot better at it um, but just alone this year having our truck uh, we would have already depleted that budget um, so uh, it, it was good that we had it um, so that's why this one went up because we added I, I should have brought the paper from last year um, it, it ended up coming up shorter than six days um, it was like four something or five something the way that the money uh, fell um, and if we do use the uh, we've already used that truck once that actually has the saw blade it goes up and clamps the top of the tree cuts it and basically brings it right down to the ground um, that alone is like twenty five hundred dollars a day um, so we have to make sure we have enough trees set up that we can force feed this machine <laughs> to get our money's worth out of it. Um, so that's why that one actually went up a little bit. Um, but soon it should start going down because now that we have our own equipment. Uh, the garage the equipment and tools, that stayed the same um, because really nothing's breaking for hand tools anymore. Um, oh. Yes. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> we do have a Tommy. Um, but yeah, so we haven't needed to, to purchase anything new. Because, um, you know, nothing's breaking. And you are not going to replace anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so the excavator with the hammer, um, that was put in with a little extra because of the cost of fuel. Uh, that had gone up and again uh, most likely we're going to be using that up on uh, Lyman Road uh, because it's just a giant rock pile um, and then there are other spots in town where there's ledge crops that stick out and the plows constantly hit them um, it'd be nice to get them knocked off so it, it stops doing the damage to the truck and the plow um, and that's that's scattered all over town uh, the stump grinder he's actually coming in tomorrow um, so what that does is after we remove the trees, anything within three to four feet from the edge of the road, uh, we have a stump grinder come in and he basically grinds it down to six inches below the ground. Uh, we cover it up, uh, plows don't hit it, people don't hit it. Um, so he's coming in tomorrow. And I believe that one up uh, the previous year. I did, so I took that one up, but it went up from the previous year because again, the days fell really weird. Um, so we went up to even off to get a full day out of it. Um, but we took it out this year uh, because we really didn't have enough out there. Uh, we didn't anticipate the truck coming as quick. Um, um, and the in the concrete, uh, the the bituminous concrete, the hot tub. I took that out because I didn't realize that we had an article. I think I talked to you about it. Um, that we had. Uh, it's titled "Hot Tub and Miscellaneous Equipment." Mm -hmm. um, that we've been carrying and carrying and carrying. So now if we have the opportunity to start buying our miscellaneous hot top for road patches and things like that out of that so eventually we can close it out. Um, so, you know, maybe we won't need this one for a couple years. Is that different from the, uh, the, the regular hot top answer. articles so that are done every year? So um, yes, actually. Um, it's three, it's one that I, I didn't know about. So like at the end of the year, you have to start like closing things out or yep. carrying them over fiscal year. Um, I didn't know it was there. Um, so now that we know, we're going to try yeah. not We didn't want to like overwhelm it the too quickly. I know, which is good. Baby stuff is good. Um, okay, but this is something that was there for a while that we didn't, not, it, not the yeah, one that we renew every year. I can't year. remember what year it was, I think but we had done it so because we got a, that's that's a special ridiculous. piece of equipment that did the... Um, that needs to go back. And then that thousand dollars should go in. Yeah, oh, I wonder if it was part of the... He should not be the, When they would do the funny little cracks. Yeah, the crack mm -hmm. seal machine. The, the it, it was with seal. that, yeah, so that you could actually do, use the materials to go with the machine, I think is what it was originally. Yeah. I don't know why Don't it's there, because they put them up. Um, and and the, the American flags, we never had money put aside the, for American flags. The, um, the flags that hang from our poles, we get from mm -hmm. the Legion Hall. Um, but for the, the, the town flag pole right there by the church property, uh, the one here for this building and also the highway uh, garage. Um, we never had money put in for it. Um, we, I don't think the highway should be paying for that. I think that should should come out of the um, 
What is that thing we have? Festival or whatever it's called that we have that we extra. Did it did you got rid of that. We I know, but I, it, here's an example of why we Look, why we. Look, shouldn't. highway's going to put the flags up. Let them do it. I, <laughs> it's for the. It's for, is, didn't you say it was for the posts and the or the. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, sorry. It's for the actual out. flags. Yeah. So these ones here are for the actual the flags that are hanging. Yeah, um, the ones that are hanging all around, they go up through the center of town. You haven't seen well, them? Well, no, these no, are, no, no. those <laughs> ones, the ones that hang off the telephone poles, we get from the Legion Hall. So um, what flags are we talking about? These are the ones that fly on the 65-foot pole. The one right the one in the center of town. In the center of town, the one out here by the police There's one at the library. Is that, um, is that part of this, too? Do you use the bucket uh, truck yep, we to gave him a new one it? this year. Yeah. To use the bucket truck to replace it. Uh, I'm trying to tie to it to highway. I was going to say, let's hope not, because that means the up and oh, down. Oh, the pulley is isn't working. Yeah. yeah. True. Um, we have replaced the rope. It's getting later there. at night. It is. But yeah, just the, the flag last year we got, um, we ordered it before Memorial Day, but the supply was gone. Yeah, they're expensive um, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. the one uptown was uh, like $540. And they, they rip. They get caught in the wind and... Yeah. Well, that one's not bad. Um, it really takes a beat when we have to lower it to half staff, um, which is quite frequent now, um, because that's where all the like the metal. Because what it is, it's a two-piece pole, so you're supposed to be able to pull a pan and lower it down, and no one's ever lowered it in a while, as far as I know, because we don't know if it'll go back up. Um, <laughs> every, every time you lower it, it's so always right around the So maybe has extra money this year. You can take a look at that. Sure. <sighs> yeah. Whatever. Um, don't get any more. <laughs> um, so that's that's why we have a flag one on it now uh, because we didn't have it. That was like one of those unexpected expenses that you know made mm -hmm. us sweat a little bit. I suppose it doesn't matter where it goes. We're still gonna have to buy a flag, right? Yeah. yeah. But it just seems like it's not in the right place. Like there should be some separate. I'm sorry, it just doesn't seem right to me. This is okay. You're okay with it, Kristen. I'll, I'll be okay with it, but. Well, we could always I mean, put, we could it put it in public, public buildings. Oh, are you, you and I speaking the same language? I mean, we could put it in, I was thinking public buildings, but you manage public buildings, so it's sort of uh, yeah, one half a dozen of the It's just a different line here to pay there. Paul, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. I mean, I guess, you know. <laughs> um, I mean, I can move it. And actually, the highway employees are putting up the flag. I understand. So you could mm -hmm. technically that make point. that argument that, yeah. That was my point. <laughs> Stretching it all out there, but that's all right. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, this year, um, we put in our own supplies. Um, because Amy was nice enough to order us some at the end of last year <laughs> because we had no paper clips. Uh, we were running, like, low on ink. I don't know if it, that's a lot of toilet paper. I was going to say pens and <laughs> that's paper. That's a lot of toilet paper. paper. Oh, paper, paper towels. 60 yeah. old paper, paper towels. towels. Paper towels. Yep. All right. It doesn't yeah. seem like enough to me. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to use the ones with the little strips that you have. Yes. <laughs> well, the, the notepads were yeah. relying on vendors to drop off notepads. <laughs> you should have told me I went to MMA. I could have gotten free ones for you from the trade show. Oh, anytime. That's what I tell everyone. When you go to a show, I don't care about hats and t-shirts. You come back with notepads and pants. <laughs> I wish I had known. Um, yeah, we have them everywhere. Um, those in calendars. If you need calendars, we have plenty of them. All right. So, so Fred, okay. back back to that hot top question. I was I'm looking at last year's warrant, and there was uh, in the capital piece. There's highway hot top eighty thousand out of free cash. Yep. So and a recurring need to whatever chapter ninety blah blah blah. Yeah. Yep. So so that is in supplement of the chapter ninety money that we get. Okay. Um, okay. Which is why we don't need it in expenses because it's all taken care of. Right. It's well, all there. Well, that would be yeah part of the road project. Um, so what this one was for. Um, was for it was part of an article that was for um, a crack sailing machine. Oh right, right, right. You guys over. were talking about that. Yeah, um, yeah. So to get that closed out, that's yeah. where I'm going to start taking yeah. our miscellaneous stuff on cash from. Um, but well, since you brought this up, subject up and with the article doing the hot top, I was wanting to be curious. I know, I don't know if anything's changed in the, the past year, but. No, I know last, we've done this every single year of the hot top, and I know somewhere along the line um, we s stopped doing um, road repair for a while, or I should say I mean, tapping those funds for it. We were still doing some ro road repair, but is there 
has that um, in the past year changed or is there a plan to get back onto the cycle of using those articles? Um, hopefully this year. Okay. Um, so we have not done any road work um, in like two years, two and a half years. Um, is it actually longer than that? Do. or Because well, I think I it's been this, I mean, they said that even when I joined the committee starting in January 21, and I think they said they hadn't done anything the past year or two at that point, so. Well, the but they used the money to do the nothing. No, the, the money is just sitting. It's sitting. There. Yeah. I thought it's they, sitting. That, I thought no, they that money used the money to do the road into the new highway. I thought some of it went there. No. Yeah. Not in fact, no, I know they, they had to. They did uh, take some of the Chapter 90 money for, for the, the building itself. For the barn yeah. itself. But, but I know like the hot top um, articles, I know we had, in fact, I think it was last town meeting, we actually had to, um, one at sunset, or was gonna sunset. Yeah. So we made sure we kept right. the, ex right. available right. in the future here. Okay. I just wanted to see, you know, if we had, so looking at, we say next year being maybe the summer or starting the next fiscal year, possibly getting. Uh, no, the, actually the, the bids are out now. Okay. Um, to hopefully get it done uh, this, this year before July. Um, because we had projects um, approved May of last year, um, mission of the TA leaving, and the bids were never put together. We didn't get them out, okay. um, so we could postpone until the spring. Oh, so are you kind of backed up that you're gonna? It will be like a big year of ro road repair, or well, you're only got so much manpower and? Well, you know, we're hoping for. Okay. Um, um, which is one reason. So this year, I didn't put the the request in for the additional eighty or eighty five or seventy thousand dollars. Um, to supplement it because we we already have three articles for it, um, right? On top of uh, almost one million dollars in Chapter ninety money, um, so of that we've only used like fourteen thousand dollars for engineering costs. Okay. Um, so for the majority of that, we'll go for our work work. All right, and you're going to skip a year of our in our call. Yeah. For it. Okay. So so Scott, consider the last two years traffic safety mechanism uh, townwide. Um, speed quieting. <laughs> yeah, um, but the last roads that, that were done, um, Keith Clemmer did them, and that was um, uh -huh. he did drainage. Yeah, it's been on mm -hmm. the day. Derby, like Der two. not uh, Barnes, right? Yeah, it was Barnes, Barnes Derby, Barnes and Derby. Um, yeah, it's been a while. Roads paved. Yeah, actually, I know it's been a, a little bit time. So okay, so great. Time flies. Then COVID yes. hit, and now prices yes. have gone up. Oh, it's insane. Yeah. Just from last year, this year, I don't want to see what it is. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll probably Maybe it'll surprise us and be a little lower than what we're <laughs> Actually, it did drop. So Kristen uh, checked on the mass dot site of the price of hot top, or liquid asphalt. Ooh, ooh. Um, so October, October, November last year, it was around 750 and right now it's like 669 So oh, Very nice. That's what we put our bid off for for that. Let's see if anyone bites it. Um, and then going in, so the wages, the wages went up uh, because of the um, the cola, the cola amount, and also we had hired two people. Okay. So, uh, we finally filled one more one more spot. Yes, yeah, so we finally filled our last open spot. Um, yeah, it's a different page. Um, and so that, that went up, it should be just the cost of what we had for coal, like two and a half or two percent. Um, uh, the salary up. line item was done, yeah, separately. it was done, um, pre-approved, the coal on top of it. Yeah, is that for his salary? What did I do? The salary was increased and pre-approved, correct? Yes, so recommended for yeah. a step. So you're now at? Full staff for what was I know we've been adding and re moving positions around and down, yes. so we're now officially finally there. Yes. Okay. Yes. Excellent. One day. One day. Two days ago. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. We'll Except see how long that lasts, right? Yes. Justin, <laughs> I was really thrilled to hear that. Yes. Except for an admin. Right. Mine. Yes. yes. So I'm kidding, I'm yes. Um, and it, it was actually great having having a full staff because the past couple of days we were able to send. Uh, two guys out to start picking up brush and clean up edge of the road, mm -hmm. um, and the other three of us we were out actually cutting trees, um, or we could have a corral patching, 
Um, it, it's just it's so nice we can get you know just simultaneous work. Um, it's it's kind of a good feeling. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so with the exception of the admin, um, we're, we're full. Did you talk about the supplemental? Funding? No, we did not. Um, Fred asked for a very, very big supplemental funding request that I just said, absolutely no way. Oh, yeah, I, I don't have. No. Um, <laughs> in all honesty, I, I think it makes a lot of sense. It's $533.20 yeah. to <coughs> increase the seasonal um, rate up to. 1909 to be able to basically get people to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because right now um, we're projected to pay 1785 an hour. Yeah. Um, and last year we were able to get uh, two two guys to come in. Actually, uh, one town resident um, from Derby Road, your neighbor, um, and a, and a kid from uh, Hudson. Um, so they came in and, and basically they mowed grass and, and trimmed all the cemetery stones. Um, but we don't know if they'll be back this year because the one from town um, actually might be going, looking to go on co-op or something, I think now. So he's probably going to stay in his field. Um, so we'll have to try to advertise and try to get new people to want to come in for it. Um, unless we can convince our senior veteran work on program people to mow grass. <laughs> <laughs> well, but given the fact that, you know, it is so hard to find permanent help right now, um, seasonal help, I would argue, is even more difficult. So I think it's a reasonable request. So I, I did yep. recommend putting that in for $500. Jeez, Fred, you asked for so much. Mm -hmm. I, I should have asked for an athletic department. <laughs> 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 team up there. Maybe we just need to hire a few more. Would you like you know? a track? Track, <laughs> field, I mean, football? Stop having kids, we'll start a baseball team. <laughs> Sponsor a baseball team? There yeah. you go. No, it's Zen Garden. Come on. Zen Garden. Oh, Zen Garden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Okay. That's what you need. <laughs> Which uh, budget do we go to next? Snow and Ice. Snow yeah, and Ice. That was a quick and easy one. an easy one. Nice. How much have you used out of snow and ice? Just um, curious. We started at 85, I think we're at 67. Huh. Um, the only thing we've had for expenses was uh, the coal patch and 200 ton of salt. Oh, in fuel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fuel. Mm -hmm. Our money fuel bill. Okay. Uh, so You've got your wage increases and. Yeah, so the wages too, that went up basically just for COLA. Yeah. Um, and that's, and the one, I don't know, do you have it? I do. Um, and that too was budgeted for the position that we had just filled. Yes. Um, and then our part time employees, um, they, they, they just prices. got the COLA rates. So basically, it's due to assaulting assault price increase, right, on the expense side, which you're yeah. giving us here. Yeah. So scroll, close your eyes. Well. Yeah, I was gonna. I'm sorry. As I'm scrolling. I know. God, I'm gonna see her here. Mm -hmm. It's seasick. Mm -hmm. So this might be next year's. Um, yeah. So the salt, I believe, last year we were paying mid 60s, 65, 67 dollars a ton. I think. Um, this year, it's <coughs> um, So it's good that we haven't had to use much of it. So that's just what your increase is? It's just the salt increase? That 2.4%? Two in, 2. Yeah. Um, what uh, okay, DOT area are we in? You know what, what our DOT area is? What number? Uh, what district three? District three? District three? Three, three B. Three B. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Anybody have any other questions on that? 
I don't. I yeah. don't. All right. This is the next budget. Which number is um, one? I got to go backwards. That's all right. Yeah. This one's pretty lengthy. Um, so one thing I found out, um, which I wasn't able to add to this, uh, when I was reaching out to all our, our vendors that hold our contracts um, early on, like November 22nd, um, I reached out to the company that does our vault door downstairs. Uh, I reached out to them twice requesting the same thing. How much can I expect? I get nothing back. Uh, but January 11th, they finally responded. Um, so that one actually went up 9%. And I don't think I figured for 9%. I might have gone as high as 7 on, on that. Um, well, what are we at? I'm just going to switch to this one for a second thanks, just to see. Thanks. What, a $180-some dollar contract? Uh, that would have been uh, Diebold. I don't know if I have that one. That was sure. 2 and a half percent. services, it's the second one down on, the, um, on his list. Yeah. So we're just we're talking even nine percent small dollar amount. Oh, nine percent of one eighty-five. Yeah. Well, that's it. You're gonna have to go to FinCom. Yeah. 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 For a reserve fund transfer. It's after nine. I told you <laughs> this is what happens. <laughs> yeah, that's the only one I, I oh, didn't sorry. expect for a plan for. Which one? The one hundred and eighty-five dollar one. I didn't catch this one. Needs another two percent added to it. Private. It says. 22 and 23 that's on the top. Is this the outside? That's <laughs> oh, that's probably because I used last year's thing and didn't change the top. All right, that's fine. That's okay. Yeah. As long as that's what you did. Oh, yeah, that's definitely what I did. Okay. And I had to add a column for the Legion Hall. So this is definitely the okay. slip. Yeah, Legion Hall wasn't on there before. Right. No. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't think I had dive points from last year. So the majority of people that I reached out to um, said that we can plan. Some of them, they wouldn't even give me uh, a number because uh, our contracts fall like in between, so they couldn't even tell me. But the majority were like, you can plan on to anywhere between 2 and 7%. Uh, so the majority of them, I believe I went like middle of the road, uh, 5%, uh, hopes that none of them. Um, we did just get a contract uh, renewal for Norel might be for here or the 1870 uh, with no price increase. Um, so that's a good thing. So Le Legion Hall is the, uh, it's not really used by anybody, right? Thanks. Oh, I don't yeah. think it's getting used much. Not right now. Right now, yeah. Not um, by the mice? Yeah. Well, that, we're trying uh, to keep them out, though. We're working on mitigating a mold issue uh, up there now. I mean, when was the last time it was utilized, do you know? I mean, Would it be summer last year? It was? Yeah. Uh, yeah, probably right around the late summer. But once we deal with the mold issue, you anticipate it could be used again. Oh, it could definitely be used again. Um, yeah. And actually, the only expenses we had there, I, I believe, was fuel uh, and just uh, pest control. Yeah. And actually, the propane we didn't put in because it was a one-time thing. Yeah, I think we were that holding on that just or because we weren't sure what we were going to use it for. I think yeah. Yes. Kind of. Um, so right now, it's just for uh, pest control. It's, I love that building. Mm -hmm. Lots of parking. All of us Girl Scouts in all of us Girl Scouts in town like just love that building. Yours is bigger. Um, I mean, you must. Yeah, yours is definitely bigger. Mm -hmm. I can make it even more bigger if you need. It's good. Stay no, most of it. No. Oh, all right. Um, I believe our generator contracts all stayed the same. I should run copies from last year. Um, uh, they went up a little bit. Yeah. To four hundred dollars.
Have we ever um, utilized the uh, generator um, for, you know, I, I know at the 1870 Town Hall, this was a number of years ago, it was meant to be, I guess, as that emergency place if people were lost power and stuff like that. Has it ever been utilized, do you know, in any situation? Uh, that one, I'm not sure of. Um, that's actually been offline for three years. The generator's offline for th yeah. been la the last three years? Okay. Yeah, whenever there's an issue and they have to open, like a warming center or um, the EMD opens a shelter, they usually hold it here in the basement, the training room, uh, because this is where all the cots are located. Um, right. So they just roll them out here. Okay. I mean, re the reason I'm curious, I know a number of years ago, maybe 10 years ago or that, is when that was pushed and it was, I mean, they... And it was pushed through at the town meeting for the generator. And it was that 1870 town hall could be that warming center and stuff like that. And I, mean, I just never heard of it actually ever being used that way. And and likewise, um, obviously, it's not even really been planned that way. So, okay. Well, I think you want a generator on those public buildings in any event when you have a power outage or whatever. I mean, that one could. Oh yeah, especially yeah, so it's like that building's getting more and more populated. Uh, you know, there was a time but I'm, I'm looking looking at their contract. They test it semi annually. Yes. I used um, to I used to work in the building with the emergency generator was outside my office window. It was a floor down and it was every Wednesday, six o'clock that thing went on. It was oh, tested yeah. every Wednesday. Yeah. Well these ones here the one here should be Thursday. Um, I think midday. So you're doing it once a week on this building? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, they're yeah. supposed to have a run cycle, so they're supposed to run uh, once a day um, for 20 minutes uh, each week. Um, we just had the one at the highway garage. It, it had never been programmed. It had the date and time in it. Uh, when he came out last week to do the uh, annual yeah. service on it, we asked him about it, and we went up and he's like, they never said it. So it's been sitting dormant. The only time it fires up before the power goes out. So at least now we'll have a, a run schedule. Mm -hmm. um, now, I mean, do we have a existing contract with that right now, the town, 1870 town? Yep, so all three of them. I'm looking at But it. you said it's not been it's, functional it's in the last the, three years? It's in the material, Scott. I'm oh, okay. At it. It's right here. Yeah, but you said it's not been functional the last three years. Um, well, it's not hooked up. Well, um, it's not hooked up. Like on, as an emergency generator. Okay. Um, we could go up, turn the key, and it'll run. Um, it's just not set up something with a transfer switch or something. Okay. Um, so it's there, they make sure it's running, but it's not, at least right now, having a functional purpose um, because there's some other issue. Is there plans to repair that other issue? Uh, I honestly haven't even looked into it yet. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. It works with the key, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it'll, it'll fire up and run. Um, just not for the emergency. Kind of not for its purpose, okay. Um, yeah, so that's a, See, that's numbers? a pretty big one. I'm low in things. I see that. Hmm? Oh, no, it's plain. You like that? No. All right. We'll go back. No, it's after five minutes. Mm -hmm. So the firearm is uh, done by Norell. Um, they're the ones that didn't have a cost increase. Which is good because um, that's crazy money. Um, mm -hmm. We have, uh, they also do, so Norell, with, with our contract with them, uh, it used to be spread out through different vendors that come in and do a fire alarm test. Um, and then there was one for the fire pump test, the sprinkler test. Uh, Norell has actually like, given us a package deal to do everything. So when it comes time to do their tests, we just call them, they'd be like, because they'll schedule it. Um, before it was, uh, there was a vendor from town that would come and do the sprinkler test. Um, they'll rally do the alarm test. And when, when we have our elevator inspections, um, we actually have, uh, Norell has to come in for that as well um, because they, they have to test the smoke detectors uh, at the bottom floor upstairs uh, and the in-call buttons and things like that. Um, so we were able to get them to bring everything together. So they stayed the same. Well, Oops, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Just kidding. Sorry. It's okay. Because that's a scan document. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, Mr. Willie. 
And you added more as cleaning service for municipal building. Is that new or is that just been overlooked? Uh, no, so more has always been here. I think I actually just broke it out as its own thing. Okay. Um, because the contracted services where it says more and next to it, that's basically the cleaning company that comes in um, like every day and does their thing. Um, the uh, more is cleaning supplies. Um, just this year, we actually started getting like a separate breakdown. Um, so every every two months, um, we're getting an extra bill for it averages between three and five hundred dollars for uh, their paper towels, uh, toilet paper, cleaning supplies for the building. Um, so that was something that we didn't have in there prior. Uh, so that's why on on my slip, actually, is it on your slip? Yeah. So um, everything new was actually highlighted. Um, so I knew what was going to be added into it. Um, and their cleaning supplies was one of them. Um, it says on the bottom, new expenses this year, highlighted. Yeah, down the bottom, exactly. <laughs> See, that's a reminder. Um, yeah, so that's why that one went up. That went into it. Um, this is well with the Legion. And then the, the supplies, the cleaning supplies parts, um, that was for um, when we have to do, uh, we have to maintain the 1870 in the library, um, which we never had like money set aside for like any of the cleaning supplies we need, the toilet paper, paper towels, anything like that for those buildings. Um, so that's why we, I basically just broke it down a little more, I think from last year, uh, to separate it. Uh, the same with the highway garage, um, because we have to we purchase our own things for that place up there. Um, this kind of answers my question from what I asked you about the standby generators. I should have just looked at the budget. Um, the standby generator fuel, um, we we never really were getting it. Um, in the past, they were basically just going to the, the fuel depot and filling the storage tank with the, a transfer tank with diesel fuel. Um, when we got the overview of the one at the highway garage, the guy says you should be running off-road fuel and not diesel fuel um, because obviously you're not paying the road tax on it. Um, so that's why we, we opted to put money into the budget for that now. Oh. Um, Makes so that sense. We, yeah. The only problem is uh, we, we're going to be setting up our account with uh, Northboro Oil uh, because they hold a contract for the oil in town. Um, we can go there anytime, 24 hours a day. They'll give you a key card. You run it, pump what you need automatically. We'll, we'll generate the bill and send it off to you. Um, the only problem is I transfer a tank is 65 gallons. So if you're trying to fill, you know, something pretty big, it's kind of a pain. And they won't come and deliver it because it's more time for them to clean out their, their number two heating oil mm -hmm. truck to fill it with off-road fuel and, and send it. Um, so that's, that's only our problem. But it'll be a one-time problem because once we have them filled up, then it's just maintaining. Um, because we haven't had fuel put in them in, in I know, over two years. Um, so, and actually, now that ours is on a run cycle, we're gonna need we're gonna need to do something with it. Uh, so that's why we have the standby generator one in there. Um, the bottle water one um, that's for the public safety building. Um, it all gets delivered here and then kind of gets disseminated throughout. Uh, we get ours from the highway garage here. Um, it's the water cooler water uh, that comes from WB Mason. Bark mulch we took out uh, because we were able to, if you remember a town meeting, um, the money that was left over from the parking lot expense, we were able to get that reworded to say we can use it for hardscape landscape. Um, so we took the bark mulch out. Um, mm -hmm. and we'll be using that for quite a few years, I think. Um, in last year's budget, we, we took the bark mulch all too. Um, uh, the other expenses, the DEP annual charge stayed the same. Um, they just want their $50 every year. Um, the same with the Commonwealth of Mass. Theirs is $100 uh, just for a permit, a hazard, hazard permit. Um, the DEP annual assurance fee for hazard waste um, that is, so at the highway garage, uh, out back we have an, an, a satellite accumulation area. We have our antifreeze, our waste oil, and things like that. Uh, we had to apply for a permit for it. Um, so the assurance fee is that we constantly keep that up. When we have it pumped, it has a sticker on it that 
Um, they record where it went, how much it went, and then we have to turn that in through them so they know that we're not just dumping it out back. Um, so that, that handles all their paperwork and their end of it. Um, that, I believe, was in it last year as well. Um, the Commonwealth of Mass Public Water Supply, um, that, I'm not exactly 100% sure what it is, other than it's, it's the Commonwealth of Mass that sends us a bill uh, for our public water um, points. So we had one for here for $50, one for the libraries, and the two places that we have tested as uh, public drinking water. Um, who, who actually, Whitewater does that. That's one of the contracts that's included in here. Uh, so they come in control. every month. Yeah. It's cold out. He's just looking for a place to stay. <laughs> we should knit him a sweater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, what does that mean? Um, yeah, so Whitewater, they come in uh, once a month and they test the water here and at the public safety building. Uh, and they handle uh, staying up with all the DEP regulations with all the PFAS testing and everything that's coming out now, um, which is really good to have them. Mm -hmm. uh, the education um, stayed the same oh, um, across the, like I was saying, so that's, that's part of the different classes that uh, Bay State Rose offers. Um, we actually try to host as many as we can in the highway garage because when, if you host a class, you get two free attendees. Um, so we have one set up for May and then we have one a little bit later on in the year. Um, so we try to host as many as we can so we can get all our guys done relatively cheaply. Um, the boiler and vessel inspections, we just had all those done. Well, the ones that we do for this year, um, we just had done. We were actually gigged on a couple, one of them being the 1870. Uh, we have to do a little minor repair to uh, how much air is being um, brought into the furnace. Um, but those will always stay the same. The state will never go up. Hopefully they don't go up. Um, and that brings me to the end. Yeah. One, thing, one thing we did add um, when Kristen and I met was uh, a line item for general repairs. Uh, because right now, I, I'm talking with June, um, like if something breaks, um, there's there's nothing in the budget. If, if the furnace pops and we have to have a technician come in for like $300, um, mm -hmm. I don't have that figured anywhere. Um, so we actually added in... Emergency repairs. Is that a better term? I wouldn't call it emergency no. repairs because right. it's just repairs. Yeah. Um, so we we put a, an amount at it for ten thousand dollars, and that also yeah. included that five thousand dollar request that the library talked about, where they had repairs that they needed yeah, maintenance yeah, on. Just, yeah, so yeah. Yeah. we yeah. kind of rolled that into this, yeah. Yeah. which is I think where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So can't it doesn't fit under capital, doesn't really fit under the library budget. So yeah. just like the flat access and fit under highway. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> But you know, everything right, comes our way. Next year, switch it. All right, well, alternate years. <laughs> <laughs> Share the wealth. Exactly. <laughs> Rob Petey to pay Paul, just what I said. Yeah. <laughs> next well, year, FinCon will buy them. <laughs> yeah, okay. In, in the, That'll be up to you guys. In the next oh. the budget, there, the, so the fuel oil is the one where you look. Are you, do we have a new contract or we're looking at what um, the potential numbers will be? I think that's the biggest. Oh, for the generator, the state? No, the uh, fuel oil. Um, next, Scott, Scott's looking at the screen. I've gone on to the next uh, one. Yeah. Like, you cover electricity and fuel oil, right? Or is that set um, by the select board? I usually don't see that. Okay. Yeah, that, that's, 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 that's a lot of my budget. That comes it's out of the That's over here. Okay. All right. Where is it? Because we don't have the number yet. Right, so that was at the last. The only thing I pay out of the fuel oil stuff is tank articles. So when they come in. It's I don't know if it's there. something it's they put in the tank. Nothing is in there. That's why I don't So they come in so once a year. So and that's, that's usually the bills I get. Okay. Oh, I don't know. All right, so anything else? I don't need a line in for that. I don't have anything else. Any though. other Scott, questions? Uh, public buildings. I just thought it yeah. had it in the electricity line. Was, was that your last budget? PPA. Yes, I that was it. Confused people. All right. Yeah, Anybody else have any other questions for public? Transparency. Anything for highway? Well, I'm just right. discussing the um, solar roof that's going up, and that's going to offset 
free, which is electricity, but I think it's going to, I think there should be a line item in there to, to for transparency purposes, like what's the solar, we're talking, so they're figuring that out, but I just happened to ask why, why wasn't solar mentioned in the budget, because I know it's in the process. Yeah, we don't have the numbers yet Is it in the capital? Uh, it's not in the capital. Not in the capital. No, so what, what no. we're doing is that we got rebates from the state, so, mm -hmm. and then the solar helps offset um, your electricity costs, and we're doing a power purchase agreement. Um, that provides some benefit to the town. So the problem is those numbers are in f process right now. We're reviewing a draft agreement and they're getting the numbers from the state based on the rebate amounts that we can get. So um, I can't really recommend a reduction in the electricity line item because I don't know what that's gonna be mm -hmm. yet. Hopefully for 25, we'll have some data that we yeah. can use to better calculate that line it item. There actually might be something to put in the uh, energy town report mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. um, because right yep. now we're doing the, the solar I think um, they credits and something about that yeah because we're the right now in the electricity account we're actually doing the solar credits right mm -hmm. now that we have so right. you don't so you see it do it very similarly to that yeah so yeah. so it's an in and out right all right I think we're all set with highway then yep. right. thank you thank Excellent. you Fred thank you is there anything that would make this easier next year? <laughs> An admin? Anything no. broken down? No. Right? Not mine. We no. go this way. <laughs> Night, seeing you your great, breakdown right? by the town, I mean, He's the buildings and all that really stuff, great. it's yeah, it's great to know really we have a handle on where the money is going. Yeah. Oh, uh, for years, this was never articulated at all. I mean, it was a general, here's was impressive. the yeah, buildings exactly. and wherever it went yeah. was magic. Um, There's no waving of a wand here. I think yeah. when I retired, Fred, you can come in and take over the accounting. No, because you've got it almost down. No. Yep. You've done a great job. You should Don't sell yourself no, short. Sure. I think you've done fabulous. So just to give you an idea of where we were last year or this year, um, so last year at this time, public buildings was at 47,678. Right now, as of uh, the 15th, 14th, we're at 47,411, uh, or 417. So that's not far off. Um, the highway one, uh, last year we were at 86,343 at, at February 15th. February 15th this year, we're at 93,379. So you've been working hard enough. Exactly. What if I keep they? them out of the shop, they don't break anything. <laughs> 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 um, so that's a good thing. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Fred. Thank you. Now we get the conservation. All right. <laughs> I won't take nearly as long as Fred. <laughs> hey, hey. I'm going to get an athletic department. We actually just switched away from it. Oh, my God. It was wrong. Oh, there we go. Oh, you would just hang it up. You would just hang it up. You would just hang it up. No more oh, you need to be thorough. They are on the horizon. The lady swears. We're in at some sort of a public safety. I'm just going to say that. 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 I'm it's not either right now. I just, I just, I just, I just know that this, this, this deal going on right now, at some point, might be worth talking to them. Yeah, it's probably going to be easier to look at. There was a reason why it's not going to be done. Yeah, I don't know. 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 Oh, well, that's good in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. See you around. Bye, Fred. So, um, Carolyn and I sat down, um, had a discussion about the plan for the extra requested hours, and uh, there is actually an original um, job description for the position that was far more comprehensive, but obviously had to be pared down when you look at only doing it for 
the eight hours a week that the position has now. So what you have in your hands is an amended um, job description that adds activities, some of which are being done um, that just weren't captured in the temporary job description and some additional ones that would be done as part of the additional requested hours. So um, I'll turn it over to Carolyn Right, and it's that. everything that's in blue. Everything the, that's in blue, right. and the green one is weird. I just, it had to do with wetlands, so I just moved it up under wetlands protection just because it kind Perfect. of belonged there. That's yep. the only reason that one moved. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so originally the job description was written for a 20 hour a week job, which is what a lot of towns have as a, for a conservation agent. Um, and then it was pared down between Margaret and John Amy, and then John left and then Margaret and I pared it down even more um, for the eight hours. So I just went back into the original and pulled out some more of the, the things that um, you guys had asked what Maddie would do with the additional time. And so these are some of the, these are the, what I would expect her to do with that time. And one of the things too that Carolyn and I talked about is um, we would have some additional communication and um, that we would, uh, Maddie could provide me with monthly reports so that we can have a better idea between us coordinating on exactly what's happening, tracking kind of what's being used in terms of time, what she's spending her time on, and that way it gives us a better idea of how it's working, um, what the needs are, you know, at the current time going forward. It'll, it'll give us a good benchmark for tracking the position um, moving out. So uh, as a question, we see that on page three, supervision received. So you have the policy yep. side, con con, and you're the direct line. Yes. That's critical. So you said the blue is additions that they would be doing or things that they're already doing? So no, well, additional Well, the grants she started doing, so yes. some of the things, but most of them are additional responsibilities. Okay, blue would be additional responsibilities yeah. um, for the additional hours. Okay. Right. 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 And I think the challenge, too, is um, as, as we move into um, trying to give more responsibility to employees and less to volunteer boards, as, you know, Carolyn mentioned at the last meeting, you're the only certified you know, conservation person in the town of Berlin. In the you history of the town of Berlin. In the history, <laughs> excuse me, that's right. You have a full-time job. Um, I just look to these kind of positions as there are some gaps that we need to fill. Um, obviously, funding is a concern. Um, and, you know, we, we did talk about that. And the school budgets coming in are, especially the ASABIT one that we got yesterday was a little scary. Um, with the 26% increase, but um, you know, I I do see you know a need for it. Um, it's just a matter: can we make it work, you know, funding-wise, like everything else? So, uh, one comment on the j description, given where we're at on the whole uh, revenue income alco. This in green, review all Berlin building permits and alert the commissioner of any wetland concerns. Could we flip that so the commissioner? goes to the conservation agent and says, the commissioner's got a map of where the wetlands are. The I, I think it's on... The building inspector? Sorry. The, well, the, the building commissioner is his title. So right now we approve, we have a, we have to sign off on all, 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 building. all building permits. Okay. Um, and right now I do that. Right. Okay. Um, and I would probably tag team it with Maddie for some time yeah, until yeah. she started getting, you know, more familiar with reading plans and, you know. Okay. Um, but I do that okay. now. Um, because, it, it, you know, it, it traditionally, the building inspector has always been supposed, has always supposed to do that. And traditionally it had 
up until the prior system that the current system had been implemented it rarely happened so I'm, I'm asking a, a, a sort of provocative question are we fixing yesterday's problem <clears throat> and, and making no, work it, here it, no. and making work that doesn't necessarily no, have to we're, happen. No, we're taking the thing that I do now and putting it and putting it What you do now, I'm suggesting, might be fixing yesterday's problem if we didn't have the right uh, person looking at the permits coming in and saying, I know that's a wetlands area. We have a map of the town. No, it, it's part of the whole computer system that the town implemented okay. some years ago and... Um, but are we having two Do, people look at the same thing? That's is my, my question. Point. That's, that's my point. I agree yeah. with you. But the commission yeah. has to sign off. Yeah. The commission has to sign off on the building permits. Because of why? Because we understand the wetlands issues. No, but is that a bylaw? Is that a bylaw? Is, that, is, is it a that, state regulation? Is that, it, is it we asked for it for years, and I would be really, really, really reluctant to give that up. So it's not. I mean, it's just. A, it's it? just a practice. I'm just trying it, to. It's a, it's a. It's a check and balance, right. to make sure that. I mean, because yes, the building inspector has a wetlands map, but the wetlands are usually the last thing that they're concerned about. They, I mean, he's got so many other things to be concerned about about a building project, and very often. They don't, I mean, often building inspectors aren't even trained. I have no idea what Richard's, Richard Hanks's history is with wetlands, right. but I had spoken to the two prior building inspectors just saying, hey, you know, if you have wetlands questions, ask me. And they were like, wetlands? So really? I, I, it goes to, <laughs> I'll say the thing again, is this yesterday's problem? And are we doubling up on tasks here that we really don't need to because I think we have a fully functioning building commissioner in place. I, I would and argue no, Mary, only because it's okay. it, it puts, um, it, it, you need to have anything within wetlands area on conservation's radar because, and, and that that's what get. this does when they look at it as part of the review process. That is really the right. only way a project would get on their radar. So you're saying that it wouldn't happen unless somebody from conservation is in looking at everything. Right. I mean, and I'm going to I'm going to keep review. that question on the table. Okay. I don't have to answer it tonight. I'm okay. Put it on the table. I think you're it's thinking a valid Rich question. should refer certain ones as opposed to having anything conservation that, take anything a look that at it, anything that touches identified wetlands. Go pull them in. I'm, I, okay. I'm suggesting I gotcha. that you flip the flip it around. The, the order of work because there's like a whole lot of building permits that got nothing to do with a wetland. And, well, and it, it, th this is, I guess I should amend my statement. If somebody right. pulls an electrical permit, we don't have to approve it. If it, if it has to do with site work, um, you so know, if, 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 I'm if, with you. if somebody's going to do a new I, yeah, this kitchen. Is stunning to me. Right, if someone's just doing interior work, a new kitchen, I don't work. have to yeah. sign yeah. it. So I, yeah. I do believe that yeah. Leanne does identify the ones that we should, and then we get an email and look at them. So typically you'd have a town planner doing part of this as well. Understood. It's not usually a building commissioner responsibility, so I think Understood. it makes sense to have an employee do it as opposed to the volunteer board. Right. And it, so town my, planner's next my, on my radar. My the question way. on the table is we have two employees doing this now. No, you if have we, if one. We, if this goes through, we have now two employees. We have the building commissioner doing it, and we have the conservation agent doing it. Well, this but, one was already in here. But I just Bill Workings it. does. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so, it's one, so really, the question is to Carolyn, not to you. Fair and Carolyn's saying it wasn't being done, so I had to go in and do it. And no, I'm no, saying, no, it, okay, no, it, well, it, let's it, think it's about what the, that It's bigger is. than that, though. But okay. it's not just it. So okay. Bill Workings has to sign off on them all. I, I, Fred has to sign off on them all. Every department has to sign off. Right. That's my on point. There's part of interdepartmental review of projects. Yes. Right. But only certain projects. You're not talking about like you just said, someone's doing a kitchen. Yeah. Right. Someone right. I think actually the tax collector actually signs off on some of these too. Yep. 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 So Historical that's... signs off on stuff. Right. Um, right. I, I get all that. So this little green line though says oh. every single building permit, this conservation agent is supposed to go in and look at. That's what this says right here in this job yeah, description. Should we add the so, word pertinent? Well, it's, yes, it says, something. it says, something of, it, here, the, right? the end of the sentence says, of applicable, wetlands concern. Applicable? Relevant. Relevant? Right. I can add the, relevant. The, the, yeah. end, the end of the sentence says, yeah. 
Uh, well, and alert committee. Right. 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 Well, let's say right. Right. look at you all and it should say review. Right. It's, relevant. It's said relevant. That's right. they had the word there, Janet. Relevant. 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 Right. Well, if you even took out all, I got it. Review burn, or, or all the ones alert. that we're notified about, because that I don't, I don't go in to right. the You'll building permits and right. look yeah. and say, oh, what they do so, today. But we absolutely. get an email, yeah. Carolyn. Yeah. You have you have your practices, all this volunteer work you've done, but we're looking at a piece of paper about no, somebody. No, I'm, that I'm talking about the way the system is set up at the town I level. Two. I have two. That but, yeah, yeah. But that's not what this paper says. Yeah, it okay. just needs so to right readjust. Right away, it just popped right can, out of me. Right, right. it just obviously needs a readjustment to, to the wording. Reflect the yeah. way to reflect it's what's, I think how it's being done. Say, right. Thanks for right. commenting. The yeah. all has to come out. I think the all has to come the out. The all has to come out. Right. Review building permits. Um, Review and then al and and um, and it. you get alert. The alert the commissioner doesn't even review building permits. Review um, conservation to, related building permits. Right. Yes, yes. ma'am. That's right. there yeah. We go. Mm -hmm. That's what it has it. to say. Yeah. <laughs> And you can even put when notified by the building inspector. No, I don't think no, you have no, to get through all that wordy stuff. No. I think it just has no. to say review <laughs> building permits <laughs> um, when wetlands. You know what I'm saying. Review conservation related building permits. Perfect. Perfect. Got it. And it's almost 10 o'clock. Uh, thank you. I, I thank you for the kudos. Motion to adjourn. I appreciate it. <laughs> <What>? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a question about minutes because I, I I remember this constantly coming up about taking minutes and there is a big conflict with that so clarify that one for me I, I have to say that there's there are two views on meeting minutes I really think that, that especially with conservation because the minutes are highly technical mm -hmm. they're often questioned they may end up in court um, you need to have somebody who understands the lingo taking those minutes at meetings. Right now you have a volunteer doing it. Um, I think that those responsibilities really should be shifted to the agent who has the statutory knowledge and training. I, I just was asking yeah. for clarification. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I agree. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, I'm, I'm getting other people have asked the same question, so I, I didn't mean that to sound no, defensive. No, no, I um, just was they're asking, asking the same question. Why are we paying someone to take the minutes of someone's volunteer? I told to do you, it? I it's just highly completely. technical. If it was, you know, but how many some other minutes? Co how committees? Many, I would say how no. much time is that going to add to her? Like, there you meet how often? We meet um, twice a month. For how many minutes? Or how many oh, hours? Right now, since the building in the world has kind of slowed down, we've slowed down a little bit. But routinely, our min our meetings are two to three hours. So that's six hours extra a month right there. that you're yeah. already adding to her. Right. And you're asking for how many hours extra? As many as I can get. Well, no, no I'm, but I'm asking four. for four. Yeah. For four, and you're four. already does, does adding six. So does how she, is that going to... Hang on a minute. Well, that's four does, does, hours. She, does she already attend these meetings, but not responsible for minutes? Correct. Yeah. She has... Right. right. So, so it's time to do the minutes so after it's minutes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Now she's mm -hmm. writing the minutes and having to type them up. And I'm, I'm, just, I'm just looking at... We're, we're adding... I, I'm just not sure that it's that that plus all these other blue things are going to, and that may end up being true. Um, I'm d you, you guys asked for what additional work she could do with those additional four yeah, hours. Yeah, no, I get and, it. I just, just, the, I'm just to take try on to the clarify. volunteers plate. Right. <laughs> no, yeah. No. Right. Well, or to get done at all. Right. Yeah. That's not even being. That's touched. not even being done right. at all because a lot of the grant stuff and um, you know there's a lot of stuff that uh, a well-staffed conservation commission can but do. she also has another job right this is a part-time job for her correct yes but it's not a nine-to-five job and she works for the company that does the Asian longhorn beetle study so she goes out in the woods looking for bug holes and trees um, which is so cool <laughs> but if it but rains, she doesn't work. If it's dark out, she doesn't work. You know, so um, her time is flexible, which is why it's worked out so well for all of us, really. So refresh my memory. How many hours is she already? Eight. 
Eight. And you're asking for how much more? Four. For a total of 12. And with the eight hours, what has she been able to focus on? Is, is she just doing, I mean, of, of the tasks that she's doing now, what is she actually doing? She does all of the tasks here with you in the original job description. But you said she wasn't taking the minutes. That wasn't in her original job description. That's in the blue. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she was doing all the stuff in the, the black text. Correct. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But the timing on the minutes, Janet, depends a lot on your skill set. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I do our 19 Carter minutes. I type them in the meeting. They're done. I, I, I wasn't disagreeing that, that so, she shouldn't be taking the minutes. I was no, no. just... I, well, I'm, I'm, my point is to how many how many more hours does it take? Exactly. You know, you're already going to the meetings, then you're yeah. going to do the minutes. How yeah. many more does it take? I, I, mm -hmm. It depends on your skill set. Yeah. I mean, obviously, they'll adjust it. I mean, if you're doing an extra four hours mm -hmm. a week, that's just over 16 hours a month. Right, so yeah, maybe the maintenance are end up taking up most of that. Yeah, that, that's uh, what I'm thinking. <laughs> right, right, but you know, or they take up most of the extra hours in in the week of the meeting, but then the next week when we don't have a meeting, she can focus on the other mm -hmm. thing. You know, it's. Um, you also get faster with time. I mean, I, I did the select board meeting minutes for years, yeah. and I got to the point where, and, and those, I would say they're not as highly technical, but those mm -hmm. still have to be pretty precise. Um, and I got to the point where I could do those during the meeting for the most part. Right. So you get better with time. <laughs> yep. I did the ones time for, practice. I did the ones for CPA until we hired Maureen and hated every mm -hmm. second of it. I don't miss <laughs> minutes. I'm not going to do All right. Any other questions? Nothing. Either? Nothing. Yeah, no. no. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. All right. Any other business we need to? Very quickly, because I know it's late. Um, I thought you might want to see my balanced budget really quickly, um, mm -hmm. and what that means for BBRSD. So. Yeah, I do want to see this. I, yeah. Then I'll leave yeah, it. Yeah. Why, why, why you're finding it? The. Um, so right now I have a balanced budget of fifteen Thanks, million Thanks. nine ninety four two fifty seven in revenue and the same in expenditures. I have backed into that number with the school amounts. That includes the twenty six point four percent increase for Asabet, yeah. and it basically leaves six percent for BMS and seven percent for Tahanto. I like those numbers. I shared those numbers. Um, so that's 13% from their original 20. Am I correct? I missed mm -hmm. last So, no, so no. what I was informed over the weekend by Nancy, the finance director, was that they were going to recommend putting forth the 12 and 13. The school committee was going to talk about the 12 and 13% budget. But they asked that the capital be kept the same. The capital I'm a little less concerned about because that's Me too. free cash. Yeah. Me too. Um, but the um, actual budget, I just don't see any way right now that we're, or even, it, as we said, state aid is not going to be a big change unless ASABIT comes down. And at that time, I might be able to give a little bit more to BBRSD. Um, I just don't know. So how was your qu uh, meeting this morning with the Boylston Town Administrator? So that's what I was, I was going to mention. So um, I met with the Boylston Town Administrator uh, this morning. It went very well. She mentioned they would have to do an override um, in order to meet the 12 and 13. But our, their budget actually is for the Boylston Elementary is 16 and 30. Yeah, yeah, that's there's a lot of issues over there. Um, she also, um, you know, expressed concern as well. Um, and they have a strong parent group, as, as we saw from the school committee uh, member from Boylston that came forth at the last meeting. They, I believed that there was an understanding that it would have to come from, you know, excess levy here, override there. 
whether those terms and kind of that how that process works is fully understood by the school committee. I'm not entirely sure because it is a brand new school committee, so I think there's a little bit of education that needs to kind of go on on our end. Um, but the the concerns are, are there and they're real, and they actually asked for $3 million in capital for uh, Boylston Elementary. Yeah, I mean, I mean, one of the things, I mean, you, you saw the, I, I mean, obviously we the know they're very new mm -hmm. over there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we saw here, no, I mean, Lynn representing me with Assabit, I mean, they haven't even voted on a budget. I mean, you had a school committee that voted on a budget with no idea where money could even come from Right. Um, I mean, obviously, they're they're new. They're getting up to speed. Um, they're definitely learning it the hard way. Of course. Because um, no, nothing like giving us a heart attack and providing us those numbers. <laughs> that. Uh, but, and I also know too. I mean, they, the, a member has already resigned. Uh, one of the Berlin um, members. I don't know what's around that. Yeah. Considering they just had an election. I mean, this is. Um, right. So. Yeah, I heard the same thing that they are. They moved away from the um, the added stuff and we're going to focus just on what's the so-called level. Um, the twelve and thirteen percent, yes. right. respectively, of yes. the two schools. Yes, they got away from that. I think they see that that's a no no opportunity really there. But the other one is obviously a very big. Um, it's still a big hit. It's a, a hard number to uh, reach. It is, and there are a couple things that I had to do to even get to the 6 and 7%, and one of them was to put Victoria's um, social services budget back in ARPA, um, which we can do for another two years. Another two years. Um, yeah. And that was a 30 some odd thousand dollar saving. Um, I also had to level fund um, the property liability insurance, which I was hoping to add two and a half percent to, but the rates did come in at a zero percent increase. However, that does cover um, some other costs that go up over the years, as we talked about mm -hmm. when you bring new vehicles on. But I looked at the rate, um, the actual rate last year was in the 90s. So we have a little bit extra. So I said, okay, I can bring that back down to the 103, 400, which obviously you'll have to take a vote on. And then we haven't talked about recreation yet. Um, they asked for a 21.8% increase. Um, I backed that down to an 11.4% increase. Um, they did, th those were just basically what they said were cost increases for the services. Um, and I will we'll have Julie here, well, <laughs> that's the other thing. I I'm actually out of town next week. Um, I'm going to try to make it back for the FinCon meeting. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to because I am in New York. Um, so Julie is coming to talk about the recreation budget. Um, she did have some increases presented in her budget, but I didn't see contracts that went along with them. So I didn't know if they were estimated costs, which I felt that they kind of might be based on our conversation. But she was going to go back and do some more homework and bring more concrete answers forward at the FinCom meeting okay. next week. So that's one thing, but that, that's a quite a large increase there. So in order to hit that even balance number I needed at the six and seven, um, I backed a little bit out of recreation. And as I mentioned, the social services. And I think that's all. Oh, um, and the transfer station, I was still waiting to hear. For some reason, I think they did a, a slight miscalculation. They had their wages going up by 2.9% instead of 2.5. And I have reached out to the Board of Health. I haven't heard back yet. I, um, that was they're, about a week and a half ago. They've been busy. They've been quite busy. <laughs> so granted, that's only a, like an $1,100 savings, but I'm trying to piece it together from wherever I can. Right. So next week we have Recreation and Board of Health. In. Recreation and Board of Health. Yeah, um, and oh, the other thing, just one more um, thing here. The personnel committee met tonight um, with the Board of Assessors and um, there appears to, th there was a recommendation that was made on a step increase due to an offer letter that was provided to the um, administrative assessor in the department that I was unaware of. It was basically after a 90 day satisfactory review, the salary would be reviewed and 
from the conversations that were had with the previous town administrator and Molly, the assessor, um, the understanding was that that salary would go up a step if the performance was satisfactory upon 90 days. So um, the personnel committee, after much discussion, um, we did say that things need to probably be spelled out much better in letters going forward, but the intent and spirit really of that offer letter and the understanding of the employee was that if they had a satisfactory performance review after 90 days, they would be eligible for a step increase. So that was another $1,000. Those are the changes. So I just have a question about recreation. Yeah. And, and, and it isn't anything, I mean, I, I'm not like, I wasn't here for the last two meetings and I do apologize for, for that, but why shouldn't they not also be getting money from CPA, which could help with some of that or no? So no, it's explain that. fund maintenance. Right now, this is basically it's all me. Uh, that's was my question. What and what it was? Okay. Julie and I had a conversation also because she asked for programming, but she didn't have a dollar figure. So I asked her to go do some homework. She's going to talk to Northbro Rec, and see what a phased in approach of a very fractional time recreation director would look like and that's what she is supposed to bring forward next week mm -hmm. so the i guess it was more of a question what is it that that recreation can get from cpa money for projects money for but just not projects. ongoing expenses okay. like the um the scoreboard or the, the yeah I, I just wanted to yeah. try to have it right in my head yeah. yeah, the pavilion, if it yeah. ever comes to fruition. Right. Oh, and on that point, the tennis courts, by the way, the RFP is going to be available next week. Oh, nice. Um, so we're moving forward with that, with a June 30th deadline for That's completion of the tennis court um, re refurbishing, provided there are no extraordinary mm. delays, which we never know. So, you know. I mean, isn't that tearing it out and putting in all new, right? That'll be mm -hmm. nice to get that. Done. And the funding is allocated for it. The RFP is drafted. I'm just reviewing it doing a final review right now and we're getting it out um, in the central register tomorrow and it'll be available next week to, to go back to your, your previous statement though that was why I was asking about like with these projects coming in new ones to know yes who's gonna maintain them so, so we don't yeah. get s stuck with something nice that doesn't have an owner to keep it maintained right and so, that, and to your point, I sent two emails on that. Um, one was to Bob Holmes, who I'm working with on the tennis courts, to mm -hmm. say, I need to know what the long term or your annual five year slash 10 year maintenance of the courts is going to be, whether it's striping, nets, mm -hmm. whatever. I'm not mm -hmm. a sports person, so I yeah. don't know for sure. But I need that number. I also reached out to Tim Wheeler at CPA and said, do you have your applicants include those costs as part of their application, even though I understand CPA can't fund it? We need to know those amounts going forward because we have to budget for them. Mm -hmm. So I've put that on Tim's radar as well because it's a very valid and important point. Mm -hmm. That's what I was trying to wrap around my head. Yeah, that's exactly where I thought like, you were going. Yeah, yeah I yeah, just yeah. couldn't, didn't know how to quite ask it. But, but you answered my question. But this Thank is a good you. thing to bring up that town meeting again because yeah. some people may be saying, oh, that, that CPA fund just covers anything. And it's, it's a little disappointing that it can't do that. Because yeah. you would think, like, if it's, on, if it's a project, there yeah. are going to be ongoing costs associated with the upkeep and. I think haters. it kind of makes sense that it doesn't cover upkeep because if it worked that way, then suddenly you wouldn't be able to fund new things because well, you'd be using that as your as your fund to to keep prepare. it going. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if they had allocate a, a percentage That's of it, I mean, you'd hope yeah. that the upkeep isn't that extensive that you'd be running it. Out of fun money I, I, I'm not yep. expecting it to be outrageous amounts. It's just that if you have spent so much money for something and then don't add that to your regular budget, right. that I have to now take care of this new thing. Right. And then we're coming to you with a reserve fund transfer mm -hmm. because all of a sudden something's broken or needs to be yeah. fixed or whatever. And it would be better to allocate a little bit each year to keep things up rather than letting something get so bad that it's going to cost so much to get it back to where it needs yeah. to be yeah. back well, to. Did you see Fred's budget? That was just going to say, yeah. that's the right. idea so of the this 10K. Is, yeah, yeah. This is, he's doing a really good job. Darn. He's doing a great job of that. So are you happy with where we're, that Tim's very thoughtful, Tim Wheeler, and I'm, I'm sure he'll yeah. 
he'll I'm act sure on I, that I, I just, just so you know, yeah. I it's been a very yeah. intense last week. I just sent that email to him yesterday, so he hasn't I, had oh, time no, I'm to just, respond. I, I don't want us <laughs> to get to the point, because he was asking us to yeah. make yeah. a... A, a comment. I'm sorry. I'm. It's so late. I'm in trouble talking. Okay. And for me, that's hard to do if I don't have all the all the information, all, all the information yeah. because it, it just yeah. feels like a black hole. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. And it's easy enough to ask people what they to do that. Yeah. What do you What do you anticipate for that kind of thing? I want to channel Stan for a minute, if I might. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. And Ooh. and I can't get off the um, the Tejanto, the Berlin Wire, the the schools, the big the big question here. So I listened to Stan for years say, oh, ACIBIC comes in and just everything's there and then the school district comes in, the regional school district, and it's not there. So one of the big empty holes in the conversation last week was nothing on revenue, yeah. right? So would it be possible for us, some the right person, and you know, I'm willing to do it, but I'm not, maybe not the right person, to take the ACIBIT presentation that we got tonight and send it over to Nancy and Carol and the committee, the school committee, and say, could you do this for us? I think they did. Did they do one really close to that the last few years? Yes, yeah. they did. Yeah, because, because really helpful, st channeling so. Stan, right. he was asking for it. He okay. was asking for right. more. I'd be happy to, I, to I do that. They, I'll play so you new, all, they but I'll be know happy what to do so this, well, yeah. so this is <laughs> to show them yeah. this is I, how I, you I, do no, it. I totally right. agree with you. This is how you do it. Show sure. it to us because we're showing you how we do our budget. We all do budgets, right? This is how we're, mm -hmm. we're doing it. And Couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, I mean, I would think they had that well, had that working, you know, this is what they've done in the past, and kind of replicate the process and improve from there. Um, I mean, even this year, it's like all of a sudden, I, I know in the I mean, I actually liked seeing the numbers, too, in the past. I mean, we would just skip over them, but they would give a presentation that would at least include Boylston and Boylston Elementary School and stuff like that, and the full attendance numbers. Sure, right, right. And this time, yeah, they were the starting to throw around percentages, yeah. Yeah, numbers, yeah. and you went and looked at it, and you couldn't even add them up because all yeah. we had was BMS Tejanto. And obviously, that's our focus. But the, without the other pieces, it just really left a lot of things to be desired. It was, it was dumbed um, down. Yeah. And it was dumbed down and very yes. selective. So, and, and, and I think if we had the, the bigger picture, they'd have to also, because, so I'm listening to Asabet, all right, we the town are required by the state to do some minimum sort of funding, but how, wh what's their thought on the revenues in the regional school district? How are they, because it, it may be that there's assumptions being made that the towns need to pick up something that actually we don't. Right, right, and, and we we can't see it. It's not visible to us. Sure. So show it to us. And and I have no problem doing that. I just sent myself an email to remind myself to do that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And sure. in fact, one of the things you brought up last time was we were in the same boat last year, where one of the biggest high percentage of their budget increase was increase in spend. Mm -hmm. Right, and then they all, they explained you know, about how they kind of gave some general numbers. I mean, it's like there's some like. Know, set amounts that they're on the hook for, and then when you have large you know, one, you know, students that have great needs, the following year they start getting back a percentage of that money. But so they had big numbers last what is that year, word called but when they get that money back, reimbursement? No, nope. hmm. it's something. There's a special that weird word that circuit you know, breaker. Thank you. Circuit oh, breaker. That was a good so, idea. So, 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 what does that mean? Why is that circuit breaker number not in their budget line item budget? I don't understand that. I've asked that year after year. They don't show us any revenue. I know. I mean, this year they didn't show us any revenue. I know. Well, right. that's what I'm trying to say is that should be. Okay, so we now know that we got back. I'm just dummying it down. We spent two hundred dollars, and we got a hundred dollars back from the state and circuit breaker. So that hundred dollars should come off the budget for the next year, am I? Right. The, 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 well, they, they should don't have explain any of that to us. They should have some visibility in yeah. what they're getting back in sped, right. or what their increase in revenues mm -hmm. from sped should be yeah. from the previous yeah. years, yeah. Um, because everything yeah. delayed. But yeah. they, no, no. but yeah. it was like. Well, this is all new expense, and it's like, well, what about? But we know you should be getting something more back, and no, and that could be significant to that. I mean, look at the percentage, no, of like at BMS, what 
that whole dollar amount yeah. increases for this year. We also talked about this three meetings ago was that they get a budget and they can divvy it out once it's approved, however they they choose, which is another whole issue. Um, but did anybody ask about, um, and I understand the whole thing about SPED and every child deserves to be educated and I am totally on board with all of that, but I'm still blown away by two students costing $750,000 and is there a way they could look at that and I don't know, take that $750,000 $750, and hire, I mean, they That's, actually talked about that they? a bit because I'll have to look at the meeting. I'll look at the meeting because it all it depends on what the student needs. No, and, I understand that. And one of the things that I think was brought up was also if you have a student with very special needs, they I'm not probably using the best ter terminology. Uh, that student may actually be better in an out of district specialized education center mm -hmm. where they'd be with their peers. Rather than be alone. Oh, I'm not with, doubting I mean, them. They, I just didn't understand. Yeah, I mean, so it seemed like a lot of money they, for two they, students. They can't really tell us why. Oh no, I so. totally get that. But yeah. yeah. So Janet, there were a couple. There's a couple of. I'll go of, and look into the media. Yeah, I meant let, to. Me, let me just point something out to you that. Because um, I apologize. That Massachusetts approved right. the private schools out of district to go yep, move the cap, which right. is an unusual cap. Yep. Right. Yep, so yep, that was yep. a surprise to everybody, and that's yep. key. And then roughly half of it, of what we're looking at on these these increases, roughly half is special special ed, the other is general. Yeah. <clears throat> and this is just the Berlin Memorial numbers. This is the twelve, and then Tohono okay. yeah. is thirteen. And then you, if you, and Berlin is roughly in the Tohono of thirty percent that we figure out. Well, yeah. Figure. Yeah. Of of the obligation, which is so Boylston's in a tougher yeah no in, no, no, in no. a tougher yeah. place, but um, yeah, yeah that's uh, and then they would point out you know this is mandated that's mandated right 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 uh, right this is mandated yeah yep. right yep nope I get uh, all that and it, and I'm not saying that it's not justified it's just a lot of money yes. well the the question is. Does the town need to supply that much of the revenue needed to cover this? Wow. And 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 so right. you mm -hmm. guys saw my email. Mm -hmm. I couldn't discuss yep. it on email, but I sent out what I've been doing, right? Mm -hmm. Which is making a little noise. Yeah, and right. there's more noise being made. And you made some noise. And the Mass Association of School Committees, Chris Keefe, just sent me something yesterday, which I just forwarded to you all. Okay. So they're MASC. So mm -hmm. their board of directors just voted unanimously to support. The pursuit of major changes to the circuit breaker reimbursement for Hallelujah. extraordinary special education expenses. Hallelujah. They're advocating for a reimbursement rate of 90% yeah. um, of all special education. Um, the current formula is 75%. Um, let's see. So they said they've already begun the process of building support for this position with our public education leaders across the Commonwealth. Um, but they're, you know, holding a meeting to discuss this and um the they talked about the 14 percent increase in out of district special education tu yeah. tuition being very much a factor mm -hmm. and under discussion yeah anything about the money now as opposed to again waiting a year i mean this is the one of the, also the biggest killers is i don't think yeah. for additional one-time funds in the district's fy24 circuit breaker to help offset the extraordinary tuition increases that have been allowed by OSD for next year's private out of district special education schools. In totally unrelated to the budget here, um, part of why this is going up is because there are so few spaces for children that need there's there's, there's a supply and demand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah, yeah. It's it's unbelievable. It, this is hard work. It is very we hard work. Yeah, we are not work. alone. No, we're, we're not. Concerned. We're not alone. And it's being heard and brought to everybody's attention across the state. Mm -hmm. So so one of the things, in my note, I said I sat down with Lisa mm -hmm. Wysocki. And, yep, and, I read it all. And, you know, talked about this thing. And she liked the idea, and I liked the idea, and I liked it when I heard Nancy from the school district say that Bob Conway had set up a special ed reserve fund which then you need to fund it. But mm -hmm. the state is in a position to fund that kind of vehicle. Yeah. 
and the and you, we heard it tonight with Asabet. You're you're doing the year in arrears. You know you're, <laughs> yep. you're 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 funding last year's school year. We really need you to fund this year. Well, how do you do it? You have to do a stabilization or something that looks like that. And I think the state could probably do it for us. And I think they need to do it now. Well, and that, that's so, what they're talking about, oh, um, a one-time influx for 24 and fixing it going forward. There's so you get 90, not 75 about percent that. of reimbursement. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, but also they're talking about how to correct the issue so it, it doesn't happen going forward, which I assume has to do with the delayed reimbursement mm -hmm. as well. Maybe I shouldn't assume, but I would think it does no, because we can't be right. the only ones that have that problem. <laughs> no, no, we're not. We're not. No, it's so. last year's numbers and it's delayed. Correct. Yeah. So you got you have two issues as you try to right uh, do the right thing with. So your like an immediate infusion of relief, and also looking to how do we fix this going forward. And you, and the funny thing is, you have monies from the previous year. But then nothing is adjusting to the increase of the current year. So that's you're, my point. You're, you're always yeah, trying point. to do catch up, and you never can. Yeah, yeah you're always. Yeah. You're yeah. always yeah. Yeah. And, and I think the bigger, ten, the bigger uh, districts, regional districts, and cities and so on can play with money in a way that we can't. We're too, we're too close to the bone. We're too small. There's not enough dollars. And I think, you can, I think you can ride those waves easier if you have a larger pool of money, a larger oh, pool of absolutely. people. Absolutely. So the the other thing that was in the email that I that I don't know, Scott, if you're interested in, is whether we want to sit with FinCom from Boylston, and and talk about these things. Do we want to do that, and how do we do that? I like it. I mean, it definitely could make sense. I mean, in the past, um, I mean, this hasn't been done in a while. I mean, my first few years on the finance committee are we always met. Um, the school committee provide us the budget directly. We would all attend Bo Boylston's finance committee and, and Berlin's co finance committee would attend that? the school committee meeting where we would get the feedback and everybody and also the, your, the feedback from each of the other you know, the finance committees. Mm -hmm. And at some point that, I don't know, went away. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why and everything became separate. But yeah. I think maybe going back into that mode and I, think not even just having a meeting with the finance committees but both finance committees and the school um, school committee school committee or the, at, right in the administration um, the finance people and that so maybe it makes sense to see about trying to organize something at one of their I'm not sure what nights they meet um, what well, their next meeting uh, is Megan girl was talking about February 28th to have just a meeting okay. right I don't know where they're right. going what date that is on the calendar but yeah maybe we can Try and organize something for for that. Do we have a contact on the Boylston Finance Committee? Do we know or I'm sh I don't, but I could probably get one from the town administrator. April. Yes, um, I can definitely reach out to her. Let's see. Uh, that was one of the things that uh, Lisa and I talked about, and she said. You know, the two town meetings are on the same night. It would really be useful to be aligned with Boylston the best we can to do, you know, get the best re best negotiated resolution we can for this situation as we go into town meeting. I, I, yeah. You know. I think a lot of probably things that kind of fell off in the earlier years, too, was at least at that time, Boylston was in, I mean, it all varies from one year to the next, but Boylston was in the worst uh, situation financially because they were having the numbers keep going up, Berlin was going down, and it became almost a mute, mute case to be. It was Boyle was kind of dictating the budget because they didn't have the funds, right? And right. It, they right. they were essentially balancing our budget for us, yes, because we knew basically it was going to be coming down because it's just a matter of them mm -hmm. uh, what they were going to cut it, and it really wasn't going to be a big impact on us. But do you, do you remember seeing these percents increase in the past ever? Not this no, much. No. Yeah, this not, is uh, pretty this type it's of It's a welcome number. present it for is, me. In, in, yes. <laughs> no, it, 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 isn't, it isn't just us. It's, I, it's, I, I, it's, yeah. well, this thing is it's across the state. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's, yeah. it's unbelievable. Um, I'm just everybody's really excited looking. to have it happening for my first budget. I, mean, you know, I couldn't <laughs> ask for more. Sorry. Yeah. I did. Welcome. I just sent. Thank you. I just <laughs> sent April an email asking if I could have a good contact um, mm -hmm. for the yeah, FinCom. If you could, yeah, for that to me. I will. Right, thanks. Um, in the meantime, though, it's late. We we'll probably leave the uh, minutes to cover next meeting. 
and or yeah, do we, we have a whole we have a we, we have a bunch we, we do. Them. I was going to wait until we got through the big budgets because it's really late. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so is it my turn? Do the minutes, sure. Is it my turn? Oh my god, yeah. My turn. Oh, my turn. Wow. Motion to adjourn. Oh, I was like, what, what do you do? It's my job. Somebody said you're supposed to second that, so I'll second it. Oh, thank you. Please do.